Mama. Mama. We made it. Proud. Proud. What it? What it? What it do, though? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mama We Made It podcast. You got your boy Nushi here, Roushi in the building, you dig. and we have a very special guest for y'all. To be honest, I'm going to start off by saying this. This is one of the most genuine and incredible human beings that I've come across in this life. The energy that this man exudes is like biblical, you feel me? The, the things that he's able to do with his creative mind are absolutely God's work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Devin on deck to the podcast. Let's go. Man, you are too kind, Nushi. I appreciate you, bro. Love you, bro, bro. Thank you for joining us. Of course, man. Happy to be here. Happy to this be here. This is about to be an absolutely special episode. Oh, man. For those of y'all that don't know, we got a new mixer, new mics. Oh, shit. It's sounding warm. So, so just get ready for this, the golden Watch warmth out now. of our voices. Just to Sounding hit you. toasty. Ooh, you feel me? Nice and toasty, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dev, I'm so glad that you are able to come on this podcast. For those of y'all that don't know, Devin is an incredible content creator, mm. storyteller, and also educator for those of the creative class. So I'm extremely hyped to have his story told on the Mama We Made a Podcast, and I'm I'm very honored to be able to go through your mama autobiography with us. You feel me? This is about to be a movie. My mama needs to hear this. She's going to be happy I did this. Definitely. Mama, if you're hearing this... <laughs> I hope there's a smile on your face the whole way through. Oh, man. Oh, you know man. Saying? I hope so, too. <laughs> Mama. So without further ado, I want to get it started from where you came into this gorgeous planet Earth. I want to say it's the Bay Area, correct? Yes, sir. Oakland. Oakland, California. The town, the town is once again the town in, is the once again in, in the building. In the building. Warmly sure. welcomed yeah, on the Mama We Made It podcast. Greatly Shout appreciate out to all that. the town homies. Yeah. Everybody in the town. We love It's a gorgeous you. thing. Beautiful thing. What was uh what was childhood like for you? Childhood was interesting. So my parents had me when they were in their twenties. And mm. I didn't get perspective on that till I was twenty. So my mom was twenty, my dad was twenty one. Wow. He had just I think he was sophomore in college, you know, something like that. He's like just started college. Yeah. Wasn't ready for a kid. My mom definitely wasn't, but I was here. And uh I'm happy she decided to keep me, you know. Thank and, God. And, 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 and here I am. Uh but it, it was it was tough. I mean, because I had to do some growing up with her. You know, I'm just now feeling like I'm adulting at 31. Wow. But, you know, she I, she had a kid at 20. When she was 31, I was 11, right? Yeah. So, um I grew up on a lot of uh dope style, a lot of a lot of 90s cartoons, a lot of house music. That's why I love house music to this day. Awesome. And it was because my mom was really into the club scene. She's also a cosmetologist, so she did a lot of hair. So I was like very much exposed to like oh. gay culture and like before it was LGBT, it was just like gay. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like we just like people in general, you yeah, know? but like full on like drags, drag and all that because she worked. She like worked in a salon. Wow. She owned her own salon at one point. By that time, I was I was in my twenties by then. But anyway, I was engulfed into this this culture where um, it was a lot of exposure to a lot of things that I didn't know would help me later in life. You know, I'm I'm a I'm ten years old with like fire engine red hair in middle school. That's awesome. Wild. You know what I mean? Yeah, and. Middle school wasn't wasn't that tight for me though. Like I was already getting shit on. I was like, I can't. It's no lower point I can go. So I might as well just express myself. So I was like, w- What do you mean you were getting shit on? Well, <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, you just breeze. <laughs> you bad. know, I was getting shit on. Then <laughs> you bad, know what? And my now bad. I'm here. Okay, okay. <laughs> so so middle school. I, I'll give you perspective. So middle school was so bad for me, bro. I blacked out most of it. Really? It was, wow. it was, yeah, I blacked. Like I don't remember pieces of it. I remember. Wow. I, I, I've omitted like the really really bad shit. Sure. Like maybe the most extreme, like embarrassing moments, but even those are cloudy, bro. Like I remember the good shit, and mm. I don't know. I don't know if that's like the Lord or like a defense mechanism. I don't care. I'm happier for it, mm. but I really don't hold on to a lot of that stuff. I think middle school was tough for me because I think it's a coming of age time in life. This is you know between the ages of what ten and thirteen. Yeah. So for me, even though I grew up in Oakland, I went to Berkeley schools. I was I grew up in North Oakland, so that's really close to Berkeley. Got it. Um, mm. North Oakland and South Berkeley touch, and. I spent all my life outside of school in North Oakland, mainly at my grandfather's house. Mm. But then I would go to Berkeley schools because Oakland schools, my mom didn't want me to go to them. And by the time I already started Berkeley schools, I wanted to stay in Berkeley schools. All my friends are going to the, 
For other sure, ones. Sure. But middle school, it was, it was tough, man, because <clears throat> I'm I'm in an era before you had the Pharrells, before you had Well I Am, before you had black people doing not black stuff. So it was I was wearing tight jeans when guys were wearing big jeans. Mm. I came in with you know ro- ro- rocking fucking skateboard shoes. Had Chad Muscles when everybody was wearing Jordans. Mm. You know wow. what inspired you to uh, to I guess dress and express yourself like that? I think. My mom just gassed me up, bro. She really gassed me up. She's like all time great of gassing up. Oh wow! I used to make jokes when I was younger about her getting like the the champion like whoop your ass belt <laughs> or, or, or whoop your ass trophy rather. Uh, with the I like imagine her like in different poses with with belts or sandals or whatever the hell she can grab. But but honestly, my mom didn't have to whoop me that much. It was like other siblings maybe got more in trouble than I did because uh. I think I learned pretty quickly. I just had a hell of smart mouth. But we'll, we'll get to that. But I think from my mom. She just really, really gassed me up. She always told me I could. I mean, every parent says you can do anything for sure. on TV, mm-hmm. but like she meant that shit, bro. And she said it every day. And she would always beautiful. tell that difference, like saying that with conviction as Man. opposed to just saying that. And she would catch it in the moment. It wouldn't just be like, "Come here, son." It's like, no, no. Like she sees something happen, and she would jump in there and be like, "No, let me make sure to like oh, that's give incredible. you how you should be feeling, so you know how to protect yourself." So like, Interesting. even a situation. So it's almost like I'll give you an example. So we're walking down the street. And I was, again, I was, I've already come out the womb a very warm, happy, like I was loved on, so I just love. So I'm going down the street, I'm just like saying hi to people. Hey, hi, hello, hello, opening doors for people and shit. And, and, um, <laughs> it was one day, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm just saying hi or whatever. She's like, oh, okay, great. She's, we're just walking down the street. We caught the bus everywhere for a while. She never, she didn't always have a car. And then I forgot where we were walking, but, um, a, a couple people ignore me like back to back, like boom, boom. Nobody said hi back to me or whatever. Cause you know, some people are like, cute kid, oh hi. But some yeah. people just like, mm. and she was like, and then, then like I kind of got down about it, like, okay, let me stop. So another, so another person, another person walks by and I stopped and I didn't say it. And she was like, okay, so you can't change who you are oh. because other people are being dicks. Wow. And I was like, oh. So she saw that. Super she saw that quick. and just caught and that shit right away. Right, wow. right. What so, a gem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, huge so, gem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even with me, like now, I now I know. I, now I knew how to kind of gas myself up. So even though I definitely wanted to be accepted in middle school, I definitely wanted to be loved. I wasn't black enough for the black people. And then when it came to the white kids, they liked me for my talents. I did a lot of theater. I did a lot of art classes. So as long as I was like with them or on their team, but then after they wouldn't want to hang out because they felt like they maybe couldn't relate to me or their parents might have felt weird around me. I don't know. But like we're in a very liberal city, like Berkeley, for sure. You wouldn't think that, but it was very well, much. Tough kind of for me. Looking back in those moments, what was that like for you as a kid? Like, cause like, I feel like all of us kids go through shit like that. Yeah. But like, if we can give a little voice to that, you know what I'm saying? How'd that feel? Man, I have no analogy for it. It was just lonely, bro. It yeah. was, it was very much like a lot like entrepreneurship. Like, you just have yourself for the most part. You know, like you, like when you're at home, cool. Like, it's a, it's a safe space, like your home base, safe space for you. But you go out into the world, you just got to kind of just figure it out, you know? For sure. Yeah, it's such a formative time, too, especially middle school. It's such a really awkward time. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just like such an awkward phase. You have like man It's almost like then, the start of like cool defined. Yeah, it really is. You know what I'm saying? I tried so hard to be cool too. At the same time, like even though I knew who I was deep down, I didn't want to accept it. So like I tried out for basketball in sixth grade. I made the team, but like rode the bench the whole season. Mm. Tried again for like seventh grade. Did the same thing. I just kept trying to get clout, bro. But I wasn't that good. I wasn't good enough to actually play. How come you never? Or actually, I'll ask the question: Did you ever kind of, um, with your at least your style and how you express yourself, just say like, all right, you know, fuck the tight jeans and doing this i'm gonna start dressing and acting like this just to fit in to a degree yeah i think so i think uh it would be give and take I, some days i would feel bold enough to just do what i want like i said i'll come with the red hair or orange and then mm-hmm. uh other days i wouldn't i might i might i might not feel like standing out or getting extra shit on that day you know yeah so, it's interesting like know. how loneliness and also i'm sure there was like an element of fear that like persists through you as a kid yeah yeah well, a, lot, a lot of second guessing yourself what was the dynamic like at home was that like the haven like and and also side question yeah where'd you start finding your i guess appreciation for the arts and expression like it well that started like- middle school too so it was like it was like two sides of me it was weird i was fighting both i was fighting like wanting clout but then also or like wanting to be cool and then also Doing what I love. So, like, I would try for the basketball team, but all my electives would be art classes. 
So I'm taking visual art. I'm doing theater. I'm doing like that was my after school stuff. And I was really excelling at that. I was trash at sports, but I was still staying it because I wanted to be close to the cool. I wanted to observe it. I wanted to understand it. Mm-hmm. And it was all based on like relationship, like skill, mm-hmm. looks, yeah. size, a lot of things I didn't have. I was a small kid. I was, I didn't get tall until maybe I was in like 11th grade, like 17. That's when I hit my growth spurt. Really? Spread. Yeah. I started high school, bro. I was 5'4", 110 pounds. I was Holy. little. I was little. So I thought I was going to be short. I was like, I didn't get, I didn't get nobody's jeans. My grandfather is six feet. My dad's six feet. Oh. I'm like, what's going on? Um, so, you know, lo and behold, I'm six one now. Thank God. But it was, it was tough. So yeah, that, so, so the home environment was different, bro. Cause my mom was a single parent for the most part. I had joint custody with my dad, but in middle school is when he moved to Georgia. Mm. So I couldn't see him every other weekend anymore. Mm. I saw him one summer when I lived in middle school, when I was in middle school. So he only saw him basically. Between, maybe saw him maybe three, three or four times in middle school. Wow. We talked on the phone, but I didn't see him a lot because he, you know, he made a business choice to go to Georgia and there's more affordable housing out there and all that. But I didn't have him like in reach anymore. Um, so that was basically just like me and my mom and, you know, whatever guy she was with at the time. And I think, has she divorced my sister's dad? I mean, my sister, yeah, my sister's dad by then. I think so. Yes. My middle school, it's kind of fuzzy. Um, but I know that my mom basically raised me and my sister. Yeah. So at the time, it was just me and my sister, Blaja. Blaja is 20. She's nine years younger. Six years younger than me? Nine years younger than me? My math is terrible. Six years younger than me. She's a rock star. My mom's amazing. So she juggled us, juggled it both. And uh, it was that dynamic. But then again, after school, I would go straight to my grandfather's house. And mm-hmm. then I would eventually go home. So that was the hub where me and all my cousins would go. So that's when I had a lot of interactions with my grandfather, who was an amazing man. My grandmother and my gram, yeah. um, who actually is my step grandmother, because my grandmother passed away. When my mom was five, oh, so my man. mom grew up. My mom's such a champion because she grew up basically like being the mom in the house. Mm. Learned she learned how to cook at like six years old. <clears throat> wow! Like she, because she was the she was the oldest. And we talking about what the seventies when you know sex, drugs, and rock and roll was popping. For sure. And yeah. My grandfather out there still doing his thing because he was young and they had to kind of just figure shit out. So. <laughs> The result is that my mom's an amazing cook. She's also amazingly resilient. Mm. Um, she's like, she has those hands that can just like grab shit out the oven without a mitt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like like ninja assassin <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? You ever see like when ninjas are training and yeah. they like put their hand in ice and put it in fire? Yeah. Yeah. She's like that. I'm like, what the fuck? But then they're soft when you touch them. I'm like, wait, time out. Wait, you're supposed to have calluses. No. She's like, she got the invisible mitts on. Just yeah. like, shh. I was like, how are you, how are you touching shit? She's, like, she's used to it, you know? That's incredible. She's a ninja. Um, so that's, that's a little, that's a little far back, but yeah. So the dynamic was me and all my cousins would hang out at my grandfather's house until it was time to go home. Gotcha. That's where I spent all my summer. That's where, um, a lot of shit went down. It was, it was, it was, it was a fun time. And I think my grandfather was like my number one example of a man. And that, and he helped me out in ways that, I didn't think he would help me. I didn't realize till I was older how much he was helping me. Mm. He didn't really give me a lot of this. My dad was really good for advice. Still is really good for advice. Yeah. Valid advice. Yeah. And my grandfather showed me with his life. He just showed me. How important do you think that was, like looking back on that? Because a lot of, a lot of cats don't have, you know, the, there comes a time where there's either just a male presence or right. a female presence, but right. like the, the, the ability to have both, like how important was that for you just looking back on it to be able to have that example? It taught me that father figures come in different forms. Mm. It doesn't necessarily have to be your dad, dad. For you know? sure. It, it does take a village. And my grandfather was like the head of my village. You know what I mean? I was the, he was the, the, the rock of the family without necessarily like taking the mantle. It just is what it is. He just, he just he, had he, it. He filled up a room with joy. And when he got mad, he filled up the room with anger. Mm-hmm. And every day, regardless if he was mad or happy, he filled the room with some weed smoke. I feel you. Every day. So, so when it, so, so, so when it, <laughs> every day. Shout out to Grabs for Bro, real. Granddad, man. Granddad. Like, low key, I was waiting for something like. Yeah, bodacious. Like, what was it? <laughs> he just came with the weed smoke. 
But anyway, uh, yeah, my grandfather smoked weed like all my life. It was just a natural, normal thing for me. Like for sure. I, and I didn't realize I was secondhand and so tough until I started seeing commercials, the tobacco commercials, like secondhand smoke. I didn't know it was a word for it. I thought I was just <laughs> in the room when he was smoking. We all watching TV. Yeah. Um. So but when people, you know, were like, "Yo, you want to hit the blunt?" I just wasn't. It never was a thing for me. Yeah. Because I was so used to that used being around to. it. It wasn't like, oh, the forbidden fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For real. So I was sure. like, no, I'm good. Like I tried it a couple times, but maybe I had a tolerance already. I don't know. It doesn't really do nothing for me. I feel you. To this day. Like, I'm just it's, like, cra- it's crazy when you take like the excitement or the like deviant nature of shit out, right? And you're just like, wait, this is normal. Drinking, oh. however, I feel you. <laughs> that's, a that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, man, we went a little tangent there. I like that. It's beautiful, yeah. bro. Yeah, man. We going everywhere with this. You gotta you know go everywhere. The Absolutely, full, the full road. When you started like garnering your own, just kind of like creative identity. Naturally, you're struggling with the fit in process, but I feel like. You know, there there also is that resilience within us, that little level of independence. What would like? How were you beginning to define yourself, and where were you seeing, I guess, the light at the end of the tunnel? Because at the end of the day, you know, we all go down these paths where we can either be beat down by the lack of acceptance, or we can have like that little voice within us that tells us to keep going with the affirmation of family and whatnot. And I feel like your family and your mom especially was one that that truly, you know, guided and cultivated your independence and your creativity and freedom of expression. What was that like for you in in, in believing in yourself during those times? I think for me, I, I found a lot of my believing in myself really in in fashion in a weird way. I think that's a that's where I was able to play with how confident I really was. Like if you can if you really are who you say you are, who you think you are. I mean, you can just step into any room rocking whatever you want. For sure. And I had a lot of exposure to a lot of fashion stuff early before I like before I even knew you can go to fashion. I didn't know I didn't even go to fashion school or anything. I had no idea even that existed. Mm-hmm. So I would just like window shop like crazy. This is before the internet was popping like that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm older. We all older than the internet, so you get it. Yeah. Um. So I so I'll give you perspective. So this is it wasn't quite two. It was like late nineties probably. Um, might have been early 2000s maybe I think I, I was in middle school No late 90s Late 90s So Lakeshore in Oakland Is still like a Dope area It's over like by Lake Merritt Which is like a Yeah Yeah a community area It's like a nice I'm not sure what side of the city it's on It doesn't matter It's, it's close to North Oakland <laughs> uh, And there Back in that time You had a lot of Dope salons on the road But the one that my mom belonged to Is called Justin Illusion And then A couple of doors down Was AJ's And AJ's had all the hottest gear So it was a dude from New York mm. named, named Anthony And actually he's My cousin's dad Which is like That happened way later <laughs> Later down the road But uh, He had like Again he's from New York So he had all the hottest shit From from the, from the East Coast. So like the Mecca, the oh, Pele yeah. Pele, yeah, 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 yeah. like all that shit. Mm. And I would go in the store and just try stuff on every day because I would come home from school sometimes and go straight to my mom's spot and kick it before it's time to go home. Yeah. And I just got hours I'm spending. Nice. Like, I'm, cause I'm just with her. So like, I'm gonna go to the store and kick it with them at For the sure. store. Had yeah. a couple of cute girls that work there too. So I'm like there flirting with them and stuff. And I know I ain't got a chance, but I'm still trying. Yeah. And I'm just trying to talk to them and you know, like whatever. But I'm like, I'm getting exposure to these like cutting edge fashion shit. And he also yeah. knew all the rappers. So like Snoop would come through, Red Man, Method Man. That's awesome. And I, so I met people sometimes. Like I wasn't there all the time, but I remember that store like it was yesterday. Like it was like Candyland for me. Mm. And I was like, is that normal for me to like, like this, but also like Ninja Turtles. Like like this, but also fuck with. You know what right, I mean? Like, yeah. It was weird for me to really enjoy being around grown ass adults and being around that much clothing that I felt was just so different. I couldn't fit nothing, but I still would try it on in the mirror. Or like, if my mom got a woman's jacket, I would take that sometimes to wear it to school. It was like a couple years in middle school where she and I wore the same size shoe. I told you I was small, so I would take. I would just like, mom, can I wear these? You know, all you have to do is be like, kind of not say no all the way. And I'm, 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 I'm out the door. I'm out the door. She yeah. knows to always wear her shoes. So shoes, I would wear like her dope little jackets or whatever. And and uh, I would go to school and color my hair. So that was like my way to express myself. And really, I just found, I had like my core group of friends that I did fuck with, that people that actually did fuck with me. And like, mm. we were just like outcast, like nerd people. And it was like me, the Asian dude and the white dude. And we just like kicked it. And I was like, that was like my main circle. And even though like other girls thought I was cute, like the black girls thought I was cute, but I wasn't fly enough, so it didn't matter. Mm. Like I always had this smile, but it wasn't. It didn't matter. Like it was like, but you like nobody likes you. You know mm. what I mean? For sure. But and the funny part is that 
one of my cousins who I still look up to to this day, he actually lives in LA. His name is BJ, and he was like one of the coolest kids in school, which is like the balance. But he also had a little more. He's a little more hood experience than me. He he lived in a, a different. He was raised differently, mm-hmm. and he's also like very intelligent, very articulate. But he just he was a lot less game goofy than I was. Mm-hmm. I was I, I was very much not hard. I'm not not a. Uh, not rough around the edges like that. I, I, I was born a lover. That's exactly who I am. Beautiful. Word. Yeah. I'm an adult. I've been into maybe half a fight in my whole life. I feel you. <laughs> Literally. I That's respect amazing. that. It is what it is. <clears throat> when did you really discover like your creativity? Because you know, you say you were doing art and theater. When did that expression start to come out? Did you start drawing or painting? or? I tried everything. I think mm. where I excelled the most when I was on stage, I love being in front of people, being center of attention. And uh, commanding an audience, that's when I really excel naturally. Mm-hmm. But the art skill didn't come until I had a means to an end. I didn't have any, there was no goal I was reaching. Like it was just like me trying shit because I think art is cool mm-hmm. as opposed to, oh man, this is a tool I can use to like get from point A to point B. So there was no like talent that you just grabbed on. It was just indulging in the arts and trying all these different things in this world. Until high school. Ooh. Take us there. Oh man. What happened in high school? Take us there. <laughs> <laughs> so high school's interesting. So I told you I spent three years without my pops really around. Yeah. So I decided to live with him in Georgia. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Be- was this before high school? No, this was like right after high school. My first two years of high school, I was in Georgia. Oh wow. I was in twenty I was I was twenty minutes away from Atlanta. I was in a county called um Gwinnett. What was, was that in- decision like for you? Like, was I, I didn't just want like, to do it. I was like, look, my mom's like, okay, well, you're going to really get to know your dad, you know, like firsthand and like, I won't be able to like come and swoop you up or nothing. Like it is what it is. So, you know, just be careful, you know, go, go do your thing. And I was just like, yeah, I really want to go live with him. You know, it's so interesting just from like your relationship with your mother. Right. Like that strong relationship. And right. So what was a, was it just like you wanted to get your, to know your father more? What and, and I'm also that? adventurous. It's like, if I get an opportunity to try something I never tried before, mm. why not? For sure. How bad could it be? And the last time I visited him, remember I told you I visited him like once in that in those three years of middle school. And the last time I visited, I think it was the summer before or two summers before, and it was dope. He had a little apartment. It was just me and him. Nobody else was there. Oh, yeah. this is gonna just be the boys' time, whatever, right? Yeah. When I move in with my man's, I got a little brother I didn't know about. <laughs> oh. He was living with the brother's mom at the moment. <laughs> oh. And I became the live-in babysitter, wow. grass cutter, dishwasher, wow. and ate spaghetti all the damn time. Wow. If you told me that, I would not have come. <laughs> Yo. However, 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 let's back it up. I don't want to shit on my dad too much. <laughs> um, but for me, that was just shocking. I just didn't, I didn't, that's not what a picture I had in my head no. coming, True. right? So. You didn't that, go there to be the man of the house. Or I wasn't, or like or yeah. like a man in the house. Exactly. I wasn't like manhood. Like I'm like I'm 14, bro. No, yeah. I'm not ready for that. Sure. Um. So that was strike one. Strike two. I didn't, I didn't get the school clothes like I was supposed to. I'm like, okay, what's up? Like, can we go shopping for school clothes? I, and I'm I'm not sure. I would love to hear my dad's perspective on like how this went down for him in his mind. Yeah. Because maybe he wasn't ready for like used to know what I was used to. I'm like, look, man. Like, I can't just walk into a new school with two t-shirts. And one pair of shoes, like, what's up? Can you, you know, what are we gonna do? Cause <laughs> your clothes are taking up your whole closet and half of my closet, mm-hmm. or most of my closet in my room, cause you just put me in. So what's the balance here? Yeah. So my mom had to send me clothes basically, cause he wasn't, he wasn't cashing out like that. Wow. For me to be like fly after a while. Um, so out of that necessity and then being a new environment that didn't have really arts like that, it had like visual art classes where I can like paint and do like, Again, indulge in the arts, do like hodgepodge of different shit, yeah. but no theater anymore. So I'm like, fuck, how am I going to be the, how am I going to express myself like I want to? Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little bit flyer cause my mom did hook me up and I would, um, my dad would buy me stuff sometimes. So I was, I was still, I was still low key fly, but like it was a South. So it was just, it was just a different environment, bro. Like completely different culture. I think, I think in those, in those, in those two years, that's when I really became black. Cause I had no other athlete outlets, even though one of my best friends is still like Vietnamese. And then I had one other guy who was, well, I didn't realize until like when I was way growner, which is crazy. I looked on Facebook. I didn't realize my man's O'Dane from New York was African. I didn't know he came from an African family. I did not, it didn't even click to me 
that I think he's Nigerian or Liberian or something like that. But I see this man like one of the, you know, one of the like, oh wow, like the, you know, what I'm saying the, the garb, yeah, yeah, that one of the hats and the garb, yeah. You know, as we're adults now, I just saw him on Facebook randomly. I was like, oh snap, you were African this whole time because <laughs> he had New York accent. He was like, yeah, gung ho for Jay Z, and I'm telling him about West Coast rappers and how they're better, and we used to go back and forth. Mm-hmm. But that was my little click. And Jimmy, Jimmy uh, had a twin brother named Johnny, and like. Jimmy was like, he's always been into the hood shit. He's always been very much tougher than me. Like, you could say by stereotypical standards, he's blacker than me. Um, but I, I love Jimmy. He was always just like cool and fashionable and we liked the same things and liked the same girls and we just go to the mall all the time. It was just like the same cycle. But I used to have to ride my bike, bro, to the store mm. a mile to get to the store as opposed to just walking to the store like I was used to. Yeah. Like it was like a, a culture shift for me. But I enjoyed the fact that I was somewhere new and I was like, I'm going to get this thing at least a year and ride it out and see how it was. For sure. Um, and it was, it was interesting. Like I, I started rapping for the first time, like really rapping. Like I used to kind of dabble and write stuff and like mm-hmm. write poetry when I was in, in the town. But then when I got to Georgia, uh, that's when they really came out. I used to like battle rap fools in the hallway, bro. I was like really out there. Cause again, but it's funny. It's funny we having this conversation right now. Cause literally I'm talking to my wife like three nights ago. Yeah. A few days ago. And I was like, that was my theater. Mm, for real. That click, that replaced theater for me. Wow. That's probably why I fucking did it. I didn't realize that. I was like, boom. Yeah. Boom. That, was that still that element wow, of performance? For real. Expression. Yes, exactly. It's, did you ever feel, you know, coming out of middle school, then into high school, did you battle at all, especially in a new environment, yeah. in making friends or feeling that loneliness at any point? Because it seems you're kind of in a better space. It was better in high school. It was st- I was still the California kid, though. Um, but was that, I, a, good, was I, that I, a good thing or a bad thing? It was a thing. It, it was a bad thing to the guys there who were gangbanging, like you had Bloods and Crips in, in the South. Mm. I was like, oh, really? Okay. And remember, I'm from Oakland, California. They couldn't bring that over to Oakland because they're so crazy in Oakland that, like, one street will fight the next street and we'll be going out of war as opposed to, like, we don't care about colors. Yeah. You stepped on my shoe. That's why I'm shooting you. So they, they, so they didn't even, like, that's why they couldn't bring this shit over there because they know loyalty like that in the Bay. Yeah. Like, gangsters out there are gangsters and, like, it's just, it's a whole different level of, like, it's killer be killed. Yeah, exactly. Shit. It's a whole different level. So I had no idea about gang life. I have been to LA maybe two times at that point by the time I got there. Cause I, have, I got family over here, but yeah. I don't know about that. But to their mind, I'm from California. I like to wear blue all the time. I must be a crip. Oh. This is my favorite color. Yeah. And I, and I got, and I got freedom to do that in the Bay. Yeah. And I wore my hat to the right. And I guess, cause I, in, in LA, right is blood, right? And left is crip. Should I it, whatever. Yeah. But in, I in Georgia, they, they had the opposite. So like, like, oh, okay, he definitely could wear his hat to the right. So I like, they tried to jump me a couple times. Like, oh, really? Yeah, that was a co- that was a weird situation. Was that it, the half fight you got into? Uh, no, it wasn't half fight. They, they, so that that was that's a funny story. So they tried to set me up to where like they stood in the hallway and they had one guy that was in my class that I guess was a gangster with them, whatever. But they all hung out like the Crips and Bloods hung out. It was, it was weird. Anyway, it's kind of like you see like Game and Snoop get on the song together. It's like okay, cool. Um, <laughs> but again, I had no idea about what any of that shit meant. So yeah. I'm just like. It was confusing to me. But anyway, he's like, yeah, come meet me outside. And I, I, start, I was like, okay. We were already kind of acquainted. Like, we cheated on a couple of chests together, you know, whatever. Yeah. We were cool. So I step up and, you know, I start, start stepping out in the hallway. But they are so silly. They were all out there crowded already, like, <laughs> visibly. Like- that, I guess they felt like they were so far around the corner they couldn't see me, but they were in such a big group. It was probably a good, like, 12 dudes. <laughs> oh, wow. I see the backs of them before I even hit the door, and I'm like, ha-ha, I'm not going out there. And I sat my ass right back down in my seat <laughs> and, and, grab, and just grab my pen and just had it in my hand just in case they want to come in. And I was just like, no, I'm not going out there. Uh. And I was looking back, and I was like, yeah, not happening. But I was, my heart was like, boom, boom, boom. Oh, I was yeah. like, if they come in here, bro, it's over for me. It is <laughs> over. They're going to mop me. But... In hindsight, it's it's crazy because my dad was the opposite kid because he he is from L.A. but spent a lot of time in the Bay. Like I think he's spent his teenage years and adult years in the Bay. Mm. Um, but he grew up out here, and him him and his brother, my uncle D, got into a lot of fights. So he came up fighting. Mm. He 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 was already in that environment of like kill or be killed. I was so protected, and I had a family full of women. Like my all my cousins are female. I have maybe two dude cousins. Wow. As far as my my my. Uh, Mom side goes for sure. And newer, younger ones are here now. But Absolutely. I'm talking about me growing up. I had two two older cousins that were like, they're like, either late 30s now, you know, and they were like into like all the old school WWF wrestlers. They knew all of them. Yeah, like 
like before my time, not like Stone Cold and Rock. I'm talking like Gold Dust. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know those guys. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah, I feel you. exactly. But they would do moves on my on my little ass because it was fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all in my grandfather's house. So some shit went down. Like that. That's when the melt. That's the melting pot of just like experiences. You know. For sure. So what? What was the? How long were you in? At uh, Georgia for? Two years. So Georgia years. was from 14 to 16. 14 to 16. Yes. So after year one, were you acclimated? Were you thinking of going back? Was it just kind of like, okay, let, let's ride this out? After my first year, I was ready to go back. Oh, you I were? I was done. Because oh. it wasn't school. It wasn't anything else. Because I was enjoying school. I'm rapping. Eight Mile just came out. So rapping oh, is hella lit. cool now. Yeah. Rapping super cool. Yep. I'm, I'm already battling. Yeah, you're Juilliard performing. Yeah, and right now, now more kids are crowding around. Now it's just not the rap heads and the fucking hip hop yeah. nerds. Yeah. Now it's everybody like, ooh, you know, Eminem, the movie, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So even more pressure mounting up, you know? For sure. And so that was the first time I can really be competitive, but home just sucked. It really um, sucked. Like, my dad wasn't hearing me. He wasn't getting me. He was taking the girl side over me. And I'm like, bro, you've known me all my life, at least. Yeah. She's only been around. It's my brother's too. So you ain't known her that fucking long. Yeah. How how is she having more pull than me? Like wow. how how is that even happening right now? Yeah, because la- my last experience with my pops before that, I also have two twin sisters who are in their twenties, I believe now. Early, we're not as close as I wish we were, or close at all, really. Um, but at, at, it was a time in middle school. My dad, or was it elementary, late elementary school, probably. Yes, he was married to his first wife, and I had two twin sisters by them. And he lived in Hercules, which is like a nice suburb in the Bay Area, kind of close to like the Rodeo area or whatever, if you have any geographical, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I used to visit him every other weekend, mm-hmm. dope house, have my bike. Like it was a different, again, another different experience. Yeah. And one time Rachel tried to like, and that's her name, uh, was really tried to come at me sideways and he would protect me every time. I'm like, no, like that's crazy. Like, I, I think, I think one time I went to go play basketball and like I had to come home before the street lights and. We were in the middle of a game and I lost track of time and ran home straight after, you know, after the game. I was like, oh, snap, it's dark. Ran back to the house and she was freaking out. She had called the police and like she was like, cause she was like, I really worried about me instead of like just driving down to the park where I'm always at. Whatever. Like it was. Yeah. But again, like in hindsight, she'd never had taken care of a kid before. Oh. She just had her own. She, I think she was still, but she's still pregnant at the time or just had two babies. So she was yeah. already mm. just like, yo. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she was freaking out. Then like she gave me a. I guess a spanking with a wooden spoon, whatever, and then and then sent me to my room, and I was just heated, like, bro, like this, you making such a big deal of it. My dad came home, like, what are you talking about? No, you tripping? Like, come yeah. on, chill, like it's fine. Like I was like, thank you, yeah, and I felt like he had my back. So yeah. this is what I'm expecting when I get to Georgia, for sure. sure. Major letdown, major letdown. So for me, I wanted to come back, and he was like, look, man, no, I think you're really in your head right now. You wanna. You like okay? I hear I'm hearing you out. Let's see if we can make it better. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you just you know I don't want you to feel coddled and feel like you just on your mom's teeth, like you being so close to her and like I feel like she's you know she's getting in your head or whatever blah blah. blah. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's give let's give it one more try. So I, I gave it another year. After that year, same thing, just same shit. Of, I just left. Of, I had to boom. leave. It, it was it was home, bro. It wasn't it wasn't Georgia per se. Although the summers out there suck. I mosquitoes yeah. other bugs i can't even name they're just big as hell crickets are huge like tarantulas <laughs> Dude, they're, they're all on steroids all the bugs are on steroids i don't know what's in the water out there over, <laughs> bro bro have you ever sprayed a roach with raid and it lives and keeps walking oh man that's wild no like like oh thank you for the shower <laughs> bro I'm, thank you i'm dead ass bro like you, you have to hit you have to hit a kill a roach in georgia like the flying kind you have to hit it with the might of the Lord. You got to really put your whole, like, it's not just like, like the little step. Nah, there's no step. You got to wow. really like get a hard bottom shoe. I'll get one of my dad's dress shoes and just, bam. I have to. Oh. I have to. Otherwise, because that hard shell, I, they, they, I guess they've evolved into some <laughs> yeah. badass creatures. Because them shells are like glass. Like, like turtle like, shells. Like, Darwinian like anomalies, you like you like bro. Glass. You put the glass down, you really got to put your might in to break it, bro. It's crazy, bro. That, it. that's, that's one of the things that really freaked me out about Georgia. <sighs> to replay. This is going to be a long talk. I <laughs> love it. I love it. Well, I hope so. You feel it, me? It better. For real. <laughs> We're t- we going through life stories over here. <laughs> Good for Big you. Facts. What, what was the welcome back to the Bay like? And had you changed? Yes. Yes and no. So at my core, I'm still love. 
Still haven't really been in no fights. I've just I've just dodged the bullets of being jumped. For sure. But I'd gotten a lot closer to black culture. Like I know full I go I know Fabulous first album by heart, fifty cents first album by heart. Who else? I I was listening to a whole bunch of like East Coast music that I never listened to because the homies around me that I used to rap with, he's like, no, the diplomats. Like he put me on a whole bunch of stuff. He used to rap over a whole bunch of beats. Like mm. uh yeah, just like state property. All that, like we yeah. was, we was, we was deep in it. So I, I learned, I got exposed to a lot of other hip hop, and that changed me. And I wouldn't necessarily even say for the better. I think on one hand, I got to learn a new talent. I got to kind of have my theater in a way. Mm-hmm. But it also fucked up my mind to where I think I started becoming. If I stayed in Georgia for two more years, I might have become a little more of a, a, an aggressive person. Like I would, I would have been not me. Like Ooh. and I had I also had a chip on my shoulder because I'm not interesting. I'm not sure if you oh yeah music bro that 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 can brainwash you a whole different direction sure like I had desires to like be angry when I didn't need to you mm. know what I mean like because you like you like singing those lyrics over and over you know Fifty Cent's first album we all know oh, that yeah. it's yeah. all just about kill a nigga shoot a nigga like, it was all of that right right yeah. yeah sell drugs slap your grandma it was just <laughs> all the worst shit possible. <laughs> But I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Right. Yeah. It was the coolest shit. I still know all the songs by heart. Mm. And 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 I had no perspective. I was just a sponge, you know? So yeah. and even though I never lived that life. Your ethos was, didn't connect with that. Hello. However, I got sucked in because like I would cause like 50 Cent's first album came with the the CD that you can put in your computer too, and you can see a lot of videos. Yep. The ones you can't show on TV where they had the guns on screen. It wasn't passe like it is now when people just show throwing them on Instagram. I didn't see guns on screen like that before. For sure. And then I'm also got LimeWire and I'm downloading Smack DVD and stuff, and they got guns on screen there too. It's yeah. like this gritty world of like rap. And I was like, this is really cool. It's inner city. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a part of something that a lot of people aren't a part of. So it's mm-hmm. almost like having a niche, like like nerd culture, same thing. For sure. Same deal. Except I wasn't from that shit. I was just a fan of it. Mm. So I wasn't of it. I was, you know what I mean? I was, I was around it, in it, interested in it, but it wasn't, it's not in me. I can't really yeah. live that. And yeah, I, I didn't, and I had desires too, which is a weird, weird thing to say. Yeah. And not, not to the point where it would tip me over the edge where I had to go actually get into it, but similar to like, you heard interviews with Tupac because you know he was very, very much a dual person, a, a person. Everybody has For duality, sure. but. Very much a poet, very much a, much intellectual, very Absolutely. much um, a great human being. But at the same time, he's like, when you start rapping about this gangster shit, you got to start living it. For sure. So I got me several straps now mm-hmm. because people are going to test you. So <laughs> I, I didn't take it that far. And I had to, I had to kind of catch myself and bring myself back to who I was. Like, for instance, in the South, you know, the racism is just in the air, just thick. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about Confederate flags on belts, yeah. earrings, anything yeah. they can slap it on. Yeah. <laughs> Tattoos, license plates. Yeah, it's in the morning dew. Tra- it's in the morning dew, my boy. <laughs> right? So that was crazy for me. And then also just getting mean mugged for no reason. You know what I mean? Just like dudes in like the fucking... Tre- the before for went the, tr- the trucker hats yeah and the fucking camo for no reason in my pickup truck and we're in high school but you're big like a grown man and just mugging me as i walk into school like why you know with your big confederate flag shirt i, I know what time it is you don't have to say it to me i know for sure mm-hmm. um or just like random nigger as they drive past me on the street or whatever not in my school because then i would just rat them out because i would definitely tell on you on some shit like that um, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting told on i am yeah. snitching on that one um so <laughs> that was you that. crossed that line let it be yeah. known you are getting we have on. a problem absolutely uh but like yeah grown-ass people so that so since I was kind of on defense, I remember literally coming back home, spent maybe like a month back into the, into the bay. I moved back and I'm crossing the street and I guess somebody didn't see me and like, you know, like stop, stop their car real fast. And I look over at them like, like, what the fuck? And like, again, oh. I'm not, you know me, I'm not an aggressive person like that. Yeah. yeah. But I had to catch myself like Devin, like you're home, like chill. Wow. Interesting. Like chill. Like, like I literally had to. Awesome. Tell myself, Lowercase like, PTSD type bro. shit. Bro. Yeah, lowercase PTSD, the lowest of cases. Yeah, but yes, it was like that. Wow, and I was surprised at myself. I had to really get myself back, but I had grown physically, grown. I'm like again, I'm 17. Wow, so now I'm tall. There we is. Now, now I'm like 5'10. There we go. I can rap. I'm dressing like a Negro. You know what I mean? I got my Air Force Ones. Oh shit, I forgot to tell y'all. While I'm in Georgia, I started customizing shoes too. Really? Yes. How'd that start? 
It started with fucking not getting accepted in the basketball community. So remember, the basketball thing was trying to get me clout in middle school. Yeah. And that got me introduced to sneaker culture. Because the only reason I wanted to do basketball was to be cool, because all I knew was Michael Jordan. He was the most successful black person I knew. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, that's the way. Mm. Basketball. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trash at that shit, though. Not athletic. I can't do a pull-up. I can do half a push-up. I was just weak. So... No, not going to work out for you. <laughs> and, then, and then I get to high school, and then and then I still love sneakers. So anytime I got sneakers, you know I wasn't getting a lot of them, I would just remix them. So I was like trying to learn how to paint them. So I'd get like puff paint and like put them on there, and it would crack. So I was like, I was obsessed with like, how can I do this and the shoe not crack? Like, how can I make it so it can last? Wow. So, like, I would like remix shoes. I would paint them, and like they would crack every it's time. It's crazy what care. necessity would do for us. Real shit. Real shit. So I would like clean the fuck out of my shoes all the time. I would paint them, like try to remix them and put my own personal touch. I was obsessed with personalizing everything. My binder, my backpack, everything. And I was like, I like this. Like I'm really liking tangible things that I can wear that I can customize. That's Ooh. awesome. And a creative outlet too. There we go. So by the time I get to high school, not only am I taller, not only am I a rapper, I'm also now learning how to customize shoes like on a different level. So and I had another homie who printed t-shirts that we kind of start getting together too. So he printed shirts. I would do shoes. We do them together. We wouldn't like drop collections, but me, us and our little clique would like wear matching shirts and shoes. For sure. It was lit like That's that. Awesome. That's lit. That's awesome. So by the time I graduated high school in Berkeley, I knew how to take apart a shoe and put it back together. And that's why I started studying shoe design in college. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But high school was tight though, because I came back and I was swaggy. I was tall. Females that dissed me in middle school was like, "Oh me now," because now back then hoes you know, didn't want me. It's <laughs> now I'm hot. And they, they all love me. me. <laughs> you know, we we, uh, we we talk about it like when uh, when people move or move around, you get a chance to kind of redefine yourself. Often happens in college, yeah. where you know if you're in the same city for so long, even if you've mentally changed and developed, people if they've known you for that long as that person. It's hard for them to see you any different, even if you're like, "Oh, I'm different." It's like, no, you're still this dude from fifth grade. Right. If it, it seems like that that move to Atlanta and coming back gave you that opportunity to be different, gave you right. that opportunity to not be that kind of um, outcast kid as much, yeah. but appreciate that kid who came back and you kind of uh, have grown and developed into this new person and people can see you differently or, or actually yeah. perceive you differently. Right. You know, their perception of you now is different. Were you, were they more welcoming? Did you feel that sense of kind of more belonging and like I fit in and I'm cool now? I wasn't sure who remembered me, bro. I only had like two or three friends in middle school. So yeah. I didn't know who would even care. And, and Berkeley high school is only, there's only one high school in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had other couple of private ones, but as far as public schools go, all the middle schools in Berkeley go to one school. So it's oh, a college wow. campus so it's a big. Gargantuan. I've met people that have graduated in my class that I've never seen in my life. Oh, wow. wow. So, it's big. so even there, I maybe had. It's that big. Yeah, I might have had five friends even then. So people that did remember me, maybe that went to my civic middle school remember me. Mm -hmm. But besides that, they were all, just all new people. Wow. So I had a chance to really redefine myself. That's great. So, but again, by that time, I'm still, I'm wearing 3X shirts now. I'm wearing big, big giant jeans. And. I'm customizing what I can. I'm still doing my art classes. I'm still expressing myself. I didn't get back in the theater because that already had been stomped out of me. But I was definitely rapping still, still, still battling. Um, was in like kind of featuring on a couple songs with a couple homies that was really serious about it. But I never pursued it past that. But it's still like a creative outlet of mine. I freestyle every day. Still. Did, did you start thinking about what you want to pursue after high school? No, not until the pressure of like senior year hit, and you're mm -hmm. like, and everybody's like. You going to college? You got to go to college, right? Like, that's the only way to do it. So uh, <laughs> I just knew that I didn't fit in any other college. I didn't, I didn't like, I was good at English because I just happened to be linguistically gifted. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like it. I just had A's in it because it was easy for me. Yeah. Math, I was trash at. I, I couldn't even count six years down, right? So even <laughs> 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 though my damn sister's age without using my fingers. <laughs> She's so, nine is six years. Nine, it's the same number. Yeah, whatever. Just, yeah, something like that. Definitely six years. Yeah. She was born when I was six. <laughs> there yes. it goes. She was born when I was there six. There it goes. Or nine. So that or nine. No, <laughs> six. Six. It's definitely six. It's the same definitely number. Six. Just flipped up. See, see, now you're fucking with me. Yeah, she was six. I was six when is she was born. Is it the yang or is it the yang? Right, right. No, it's, it's definitely six years. Six years. All right, anyway. I love you, Blasia. Don't, 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 don't get mad at me. 
If I make you younger, that's even better. That means you're further from 30. So it's all good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> man, 30 is a scary age. But uh, high school, my bad. What was the question? I'm just fucking gone now. Uh, no, the college has for yeah, yeah, yeah. So the pressure for college was was unbearable. Everybody was like, you know, you got to pick something. And I'm like, okay, well, what I want. I had no idea even gap year. I, those weren't even words that were in my vocabulary. I had sure. no idea that was even an option, right? Sure, yeah. It's also something that people with money can say because they they got options. My family's like, no, you're going to be the first one to go. You're going to be successful. Like, you're the golden child. And, like, that's kind of – people didn't tell me I was a golden child, but that was kind of, like, the vibe I got when I was growing up. Because I still have family that was in the streets, bro. Like, I got cousins that, you know, have died over dumb street shit, people that mm. have uh, drugged out, stuff like that, but didn't really touch me. Mm. And anytime I wanted to go hang out, they'd be like, nah, like, you're going to be better than that and, like, mm. go push me away. So I don't know. I think that's a, just a Lord hand on me. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Because my mom wasn't always there to do that. Like, you can't be around your kids 24-7. I just would never just get caught up in the bullshit. I don't know. It's crazy. I feel like even even regardless of the hardened communities or not, like, I feel like for those kids that have something within them, regardless of wanting to be down or not, however hard the community is, like, they see that. Yeah, they saw it was soft. It you was know what I'm like, saying? Nah. Like even <laughs> even if the little homies in the streets, like, but like has talent and has like, I guess potential outside of just like the run of the mill. What like surviving is. Naturally, I feel like the community still gets together and be like, "No, you're being shepherded from this. Like, we're, we're, no, you, you're not about weird. to be a part of this shit." It was. I'm like, y'all all talking to each other. Like, <laughs> like how's that happening? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't like hardcore obvious, like in a movie scene, you know, that type yeah. of thing. But just like little hints, you know, throughout Come life. Come here, little dad. Let me talk to you, bro. Yeah. You, see, you see all this? <clears throat> yeah. That's not for you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't none of that. Yeah, it wasn't none of that happening. Nah. Wasn't none of that happening. It just be like, <laughs> can I kick it? Nah. <laughs> yes, home. you can. <laughs> right. right. I see you. <laughs> so, so, so I'm in my mom's in my in my mom's garage painting shit. I had my little setup in the garage. Had lights and shit. Painting a shoe, and I'm like, "What do I want to go to school for? What am I going to do? I'm, pa- I'm painting a shoe as you're bro. like reconstructing, yeah, reconstructing, and reconstructing a, a, a shoe. yeah, fucking something for. And and at that time, I had like shoes in boutiques, like in the Bay Area. Really? And, like, yeah, I had a little, I had that little thing uh-huh. going. What's your going. enterprise really and stuff on? Yeah, it, it wasn't an enterprise. I was just trying to get my hustle on. But again, like the labor I was putting in versus what I was getting paid for it, it wasn't worth it. But I learned a lot. I was hustling. I, I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't a great use of my time. And I was like. Why don't I study shoe design? Because if I, if I become if I become the manufacturer, I can just design it. Other people make it for me. We sell it at scale. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's going to be definitely less work than this shit right here. For mm. sure. So I looked into what shoes, what what the path for shoe design is. I know it's like industrial design usually, like guys who design cars and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But those are like really technical. So I was like, okay, well, let me try it. And I went to the Academy of Art University in SF, 18, fresh out of high school. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have took a year off, but it's all good. Uh, I jumped right into it. Uh, I took a very slow route because I still had to eat. So I worked full time or part time at first, then full time while I was in school. Mm-hmm. That was that was toughy. Um, but when I didn't have a job, no, I, I worked kind of part time because I will also do graphic design outside of school. So uh, graphic design started when I was 16 and I was in high school still. And I, my one of my art classes was uh I think it's called computer science or basically Photoshop class. They teach you, yeah, they yeah. teach you Photoshop. Yeah. And I was, I would find mock-ups. I think who put them out? It was maybe, maybe a hype beast put them out or some blog put them out and I would download them. Maybe like, it was like four shoes, like Air Force One, whatever the popular shoes were. Um, an Adidas shell toe and something else. And they were templates on Photoshop. And then I would just, every day I would go in there and just color shoes. Awesome. And I was like, Oh, I can make mock-ups for my customers so they can see what their shoe looks like mm. before I make it. And then I started learning how they made the templates. And I was like, oh, okay, so this layer has this on it. And da, da, da. I started making my own templates of different shoes that as shoes became more popular. Because whoever made those templates didn't keep them up. Sure. For I sure. think they did for a little bit, but not as, like, they weren't as, as much of a variety as I wanted. Absolutely. So I started making my own. I started like, so now I can show customers what the shoe's going to look like and then make the exact shoe. Wow. So that was tight. So anyway, long story short, I'm getting good on Photoshop. I'm making like, and while I'm in college, I'm still making my homies mixtape covers. I'm making posters. Mm. But then also, like, I had a really strong church community, too. So I would, like, I had one of the people that went there was, like, owned, like, one of the biggest real estate companies in Oakland. So I was making, like, pamphlets for her and helping her with her brand identity and, like, awesome. mailers and shit like that. 
you know so it was it was tight i i, I, was, I learned how to code switch i know how to you know dress in different environments i knew how to kind of carry myself you know yeah. differently with different crowds of people and again i loved hanging out with old people bro like i promise you like i spent a lot of time with adults that were like married and they were younger married, maybe like you know, 30 35 or something like that sure. but again i'm 18 and 19 i'm 20 yeah but i like I I just enjoy that. I enjoy soaking up game. I enjoy learning from people that I feel like are living lives that I would want to live. That's just For one sure. of the things I learned. I learned how to like if you want something in life, mm-hmm. then kick it with the people that got it. Bar. It's real. That's, that's a bar. Yeah. That's a candy bar. <laughs> yeah. For real. For real. That's, that's, that's a Snickers right there. Yeah, that okay? is. Yeah. For real. So. That's a giant Easter egg twist, bro, bro. Real, real you know talk, and and they would always sit back. Like they, they, they let me kick it, then after a while they'd be like, "Dev, it's crazy how you can sit here and just like hang with us in a conversation, mm. and then like go talk to like a child, and then go talk to you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how you know? I'm, I don't know. I'm just, and it is what it is. Maybe, maybe I was, meant, but I'm also at the same time. I will also get mistaken for immature because I'm very expressive, as I'm sure you probably went through some of Absolutely. that when you were younger. Because yeah. we just wild for sure. But at the same time, like. I think I'm also like very emotionally intelligent too. I just didn't have a lot of like throttle control back when I was younger, but yeah, um, I just learned how to just code switch better and you know bridle your tongue and kind of sense things a little better. Even though I could sense them, I didn't necessarily know that. Like, like Spider Man when he first learned his powers, you know, what I mean, like I, all over. The I place. mean, look, like how are you supposed to like how are you supposed to know where a boundary is until right. you cross it? Is that hello? You know what I'm hello? saying? Hello. Oh, like everybody like trying to like be within a boundary, but you don't <laughs> oh, even bar. know what the fuck it is yet. <laughs> Another like, bar, I'm not dropping gonna, bars. I'm not gonna uh, put my foot on the brakes. <laughs> Nushi bars. If I pass the shit, I'm gonna say I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna make a shirt that said Nushi bars. She. Hello. What was that juggle like for you? Like just juggling work, school, and how were you? Were, were you finding? that shoe design was or, or design in, a, in and of itself was was kind of feeding your passion or like w- what was going through your head during that time college on one hand was a sham from the perspective of like money management like i was terrible with the debt piece like when i wouldn't get all the classes that i was allotted through fafsa i would just take that damn check from refund check and go buy shit as opposed to being like no take it back so i don't owe more money later yeah Nope, I'm buying sneakers. Mm. I'm buying this jacket. Yeah, I was so I was so silly for that. But outside of making those dumb decisions that a lot of young Americans made back then and still make to this day, um, I learned a lot about myself. And even looking back, I was I didn't I didn't understand how to hustle. I didn't understand how to work. What What do you mean by that? I would take these dope ass classes. I had these great opportunities. I was taking classes like. Um, fashion design where they basically would teach you how to take a piece of inspiration, something small, Mm -hmm. a painting, I don't know, a destination, pick a topic, Mm -hmm. and then really dissect it, dig deep, pull out of it everything you can, and then rework it into something of your own. Okay. So that's a whole different way of thinking. Sure. It took me a whole semester to really beat that into my head. Like I barely passed the first time I took it. Second time I took it, I did better. But I always felt super insecure about my abilities Mm. so instead of trying to do my best and learn from it i wouldn't try as hard interesting i wasn't i don't think i was thinking big enough i'm not sure i feel like if i could go back right now knowing what i know and having the confidence i have i would have murdered that school Mm -hmm. but i'm coming into school bro and again my school was an art school but i had people that took those gap years like guys started my shit at like 25 so I got older guys. I'm 18. Yeah. And they come in here just smashing shit. Cause like in art school, I took three to six hour classes mm-hmm. and I would do everything from fashion design. And then I also started taking some industrial design classes too. I would do both sides because I really mm-hmm. cared about aesthetic and industrial design is all super technical. They want the shoe to like run on water, make you jump fast. And really I was learning how to design products or cars. Like you either do automotive or you do product design. Mm-hmm. There was no shoe design specifically. So it's like, well, you maybe can veer off in the shoes after you do automotive or products. Okay, I'll do product design. So I did product design. Then I went back to like the 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 dean or the head of the fashion department. Like, look, 
can you start waving some classes for me so I can figure out a way to do kind of both? Yeah. And still graduate? He's like, yeah. So he worked with me. So I took half fashion and half oh, ID. I'm just trying to find it. I'm just trying to find my way. Yeah. I really care about aesthetic. I don't care if it makes you run faster. I just want to look good and be comfortable. Right. That's all right, I cared right. about was shoes. So for me, it was tough finding my way. My heart wasn't into it. I was being discouraged by it. And then when I learned that people that were graduating before me were just working like cheesecake, that they weren't even prepping you for the real world was after this shit. Yeah. I was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I even here? That's a crazy realization. It was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it did teach me to, to like, (sighs) that there's different levels of, I don't know. It like unlocked the key for me. I don't even know what to call it, bro. Cause I got to see a taste of the real world of like, Oh, this is what real work looks like. This is like when people really are in their lane and they really putting in work. Mm-hmm. Cause we got asked, we have students in there from all over the world. You're talking Asia, Europe, everywhere, mm. accents and shit. And they're in there killing it, bro. Yeah. Killing it. Like they were made for this shit. And I'm like, wow, there's a, there's a level that I'm not something I haven't opened up. And I don't even still don't even know what to call it, bro. But I know that by the time I left, that's the biggest thing I got from college. I got relationships. A lot of my best friends were from college. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys that were on the same wave as me. And again, by this time, Lupe is already out. Fucking uh, Pharrell's full swing. This, this this is like this is like that old video of like Pharrell. Remember the old video Nushi of Pharrell and Nigo with the big chains. You, got that right. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And Chad's in the background like, "Tuck your shit, tuck your <laughs> shit." If you ain't got, you know what I mean? And they pull out the big giant gaudy joints. Mm-hmm. Bro, like we were looking at that, over. like this is a different level of pop culture. Like, like yeah. when Pharrell goes and opens up the BBC store or the ice cream store in Japan, yeah. that, that that's that's the same video. I'm like, yo, this kid from Virginia, I think Pharrell was in his 20s at the time, yeah, late 20s maybe, opening up his own store in Japan. Like, mind blown. I've never even been to Japan. Like, and I'm full fledged knee deep in anime by then, right? Because it started off as a my gateway drug was like. Pokemon and when I was in middle school, right? So like oh, really? I'm trading Pokemon cards. I had Pokemon Red, Blue. Again, I was a nerd, bro. I'm riding scooters. I would I would again I didn't take a lot of risks though. I didn't do skateboarding because that shit was hard. Gotcha. I rode scooters because that was almost like a bike. So that was easier. <laughs> so I rode scooters. <laughs> I, I had <laughs> I had I had Pokemon Blue. That was my first joint. And then I got a I got a Game Boy Color. Did I get another Pokemon or did I get something else? I don't know. But around that time it was like that shit and like Street Fighter and other cartoons and shit, but I really got into the anime then. And then Toonami came out when I was in high school and I started mm. dropping Dragon Ball Z. And after that, it was over. Cause th- then I started trying to rip and just try to grab any anime I could. So I started seeing whatever I could find and download at the time. Oh, wow. I so saw, you, were, you were deep in anime. I was deep in it, bro. I really, wow. really, really enjoyed it. And I was, and, and I found a whole bunch of guys that into the same shit I was used to. Awesome. So like we watching Akira and shit like that. Like it was like a great experience. At the same time, they're in the same shit. So we had, it was me. My man, Reggie Sylvester, who's an amazing artist now, like mixed media fucking genius. Really? Yes. You know Sylvester? Yeah. That's my brother. Wow. We went to the same school. Oh, and I, I got another one for you. You know who else was in our, in our clique? Uh. Duckworth. Jared. Damn, y'all talented motherfuckers. I love Duckworth. Duckworth. Wow. Duckworth. So he, he just... He just, just got signed mm-hmm. after working hella hard for like 12 years. I've seen him go like groups solo etc immensely proud of both those guys crazy immensely proud um and we've all gone our separate paths but have been successful in a, in, a, in our own way yeah and and, and, a, and another person is is mancy that's my cousin my first cousin my remember i told you my dad and his brother used to fight all the time uh-huh. his brother's son and he's a dope photographer dope. videographer director he crazy. did his fire video for g easy and pilo the last one they oh, did wow. in the theater i'm not sure if you saw it crazy fire but he's been featured in like fader and shit is fader yet or id id Mm. Fader soon though Fader soon But yeah Those those are the guys That still inspired me To this day Like Obviously we don't Spend as much time together Cause we You know I heard working And getting it going But yeah. You never know Where that's gonna lead you You know what I mean Like you never know What Like I just happen To have a group Of dope ass friends That help me be sharper And now That's one thing I thank college for And also unlocking The hustle in me And really seeing Like I did not know What real work Looked like yet Can you define that Just in terms of real work Because I always like To take the moment of Look, work ethic, that term, yeah. and work hard yeah. is something everybody hears so it's a much. sexy word right now. Yeah. Like, work hard. And what what the fuck? <laughs> for real. Does that really mean, though? And, and I, I want to hear for from- everybody is different. For everyone is different. And, and that, that's what's so, why it just bugs me so much. But, you know, 
you're unlocking this this hustle, this work ethic to you. What did that really mean? Like, is it, it, to articulate that? I didn't know what work looked like, bro, because I lacked conviction. Mm. I had no target to shoot for. Mm. So a lot, of, what I imagine, a lot of these kids in this class had something, or that's what it takes for me. I'm not sure what the hell they had. They was on some other shit. But I knew that mm. I was a. I wasn't measuring up, so that bothered me. I'm not as I'm not as fly as you at this shit. So that mm-hmm. bothered me. I'm competitive. So even though I'm not sports dude, I'm competitive in whatever I'm trying to go for. Sure. And I'm like, you are shitting on me right now. I think I'm dope. And I got doper closer to the end. Like I would apply myself to like compete. Yeah. But I found out I didn't like sewing. I found out I enjoyed the design piece, but not as much clothes, but more so still footwear. But I wasn't putting in the time into it. I wasn't obsessed with it. I didn't I didn't love it so much that I needed it like I need to eat something mm. because I lacked conviction. I didn't have a vision for myself. So when I leave school, because I'm like, this shit's a sham. Everybody's working at like, I keep running into people fucking at retail stores at Nordstrom's or Cheesecake Factory or whatever. Like, and you just graduated and you like worked hard and paid for all this school. And like, only people I knew that had jobs, it's like parents already were well connected and had crazy money. Sure. Um, I know I knew people that like, well, hearsay, so to speak, but a couple people who like just bought their degree and said, fuck it. Let me just go to the school and be like, look, how much is going to take mm. so my son gets a degree or whatever. And just like, you know, whatever. Cause like yeah. it, it, so for me, I was just so pissed off at the fact that like I've been here for so long. Again, I'm taking maybe two classes a semester as opposed to the four or five you could take if you yeah. had the time. Yeah. So now I'm what five years in the school. Still haven't graduated yet. I I, might, I may be like a year away from graduating. Mm. But in my heart, I just couldn't do it. Because I had to ask myself the question, look, man, like even when I do get out of here, if I graduate or I drop out, I make my own shoes. How the fuck am I going to find this money? Because mm. like, I'm not sure what the price is now for Elast. And Elast, for, the, for people that don't know, is the mold that goes inside of a shoe to design a shoe around. And that thing is about two grand for Elast. Not a pair, Elast. So you have a lot of new shoe companies that come out and they don't bring out half sizes. That's why. Oh, wow. Because the last is expensive as fuck, my boy. Wow. So I was like, where am I going to find this? I had no idea about raising money until like the tech boom. I had no idea that was even a thing. Sure. Because I don't come from that. I don't come from that world, bro. I'm, st- I'm still like I have a tax person. You know what I mean? I'm still like really bad at managing money. Thank God for my wife who's a lot better than I am. Mm. Like it was like I didn't, I didn't know any of that shit. So it was such a a making question for me that gave me that drove me to actually work i got conviction to figure out and crack the code of like what gets people to buy shit like because even if i could find the money and make the shoe how do i sell it hmm. like what makes the difference between my shoe and fucking nike who was like at the top of the world this is before adidas started coming for their neck mm. for sure this is before puma started trying to innovate yeah. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and make those fire shoes on your feet anoush uh, <laughs> Shout out to Chief. You, you feel, feel me? me? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck with you, bro. Fuck with you. Um, yeah, bro. So like, it was, it was such a like quest for me that it pushed me to figure it out. So dropped out of school, got married. My wife married my broke ass. Twenty ten. I'm twenty three years old. Wow. Still, still deep into my church community. Um, I want to. I haven't done this. We haven't done this often, but I want to know how you and your wife cross paths and how that developed. Oh man, because it's beautiful. Story. It, it, it's beautiful to see such young love that has withstood, right? And Hello. and 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 to be honest, like your wife, from everything that you've said and spoken about her, it seems to be such a pillar in your life, bro. So I want to touch on this with the story shit, like, because I feel like it's very pivotal, like it's a very significant part of your story. Yes. Tell me about this. So, for perspective, for me to back up so you can get the the full shit, piece. I'm, I'm moonwalking so, so, back. What's good? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Shout out to Jaden. <laughs> you did. You feel me? <laughs> uh, so remember, I told you I like kicking it around a lot of old people. So I was really engulfed in my church community. Yeah. I was not a saint by far. However, um, I did a lot of babysitting. I was like my side hustle there. So I watched a lot of people's kids. I got a lot of like work and business through that community. I would customize people's shoes. I'm watching your kids. I'm, I wash your car. However, I can get some bread. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was, but also like I learned a lot of great lessons. Again, like I told you back to my grandfather again, all father figures don't always come 
in the form of like biological dad, right? For sure. So my pastor put me on a whole bunch of game. He from the streets. You know, he was he didn't he didn't come up in church. He didn't come and wake up to like other th- ways of thinking until he was an adult. Mm. So it was he was very relatable as a person. He found it through the trenches. Exactly, exactly. So he put me on a lot of game, just like nuggets, just like bars. Like I like for the first time because by the time I got to back to Oakland, bro, I was so over church because Southern, like my Southern Baptist experience was just like, okay, people just running around. Like it's the same shit I've been seeing since I was a kid. As soon as I ain't got to come here, I ain't coming here no more. <laughs> yeah. I get to Oakland. I'm living at my mom's house. So I still got to go. I'm still in your house. I'm going to respect it. I'm going to go to church. But this man just started talking to me, bro. It was just like English. Like we speaking right now. Wow. And I'm like, oh. And I got a little outline. I can actually apply this to my life. It's like, oh, shit. Mm. This is a relationship. Oh, it's not a rule book. Oh, shit. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And, that, and that, it, I was I was sold after that. And th- then I started developing and kind of unwinding. Remember that I told you, like, my mind was changed from that, that crazy rap shit? Yeah. So that and also the people I was kicking it with. So who I was rapping with were very, like, much more, like, common sense, fucking Talib Kweli, Lupe Fiasco. I was getting more into that stuff. I was getting mm. more into more into Pharrell, more into like, well, I am. So just more of like, and then back into my house shit, like back to who I was. Like I came back to the Bay, I came back to myself. Incredible. Wow. So peace, love, and hair grease was more so. Yeah. More, more, more so on and that. And you had you a know? voice Woo! for it. Exactly. And it now I had a voice and I had people that looked like me that were doing it that were cool. Incredible. And that was the most important part that helped me. Yeah. Man, full circle, boy. It's crazy. You feel me? Take a sip of this right this here. Full circle, I just want to take a second and just circle. say like, the beauty of, uh, of this is that these things exist. Mm -hmm. right and to be honest like in life in and of itself there isn't a formula right there's just experiences Mm -hmm. right right and you know shout out to this like mid podcast little moment but talk to him this this is the biggest thing with this podcast and i love that you had that like moment you feel me because like that that, that's really what brought this out of me is that if there's anything anybody listening to these podcasts this podcast can get is just appreciate the uniqueness of your own story Man. as much. As much as you want to hear like the kernels and, and the bars and the gems dropped by those that you look up to, understand how similar our lives all really are. Mm. That's the realest shit. Another you know bar. <laughs> yeah. Nushi. Another For real. Nushi bar. Because like... We, we eat, we're eating a lot of Nushi bars. <laughs> Bro, I'm so No, full. but like we, we, we eating like the homie bars because like, it's coming out of me because it's like this is normal life. Yeah. Right. What we construct, what we build becomes that. Right. But who we are, we're all human beings at Mm -hmm. the baseline. And that's the most beautiful part. Everybody's lives, everybody's life and everybody's lives are written differently. There's a beauty in that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like if we could just appreciate and it's the gorgeous thing about doing this podcast. Like I love like literally having you have that moment be like, damn, full circle. Right. Because rarely do we, even those that can be thought leaders, even those that can be influencers, even those that can be creative leaders and just like levels beyond their craft, we are all human and we've lived a life to get to X point. You know what I'm saying? For you to like have gone to school with Reggie Sylvester and Duckworth and all of them. Like, (laughs) but like everybody has walked the road. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like if we can come to the point where more of the youth realizes that it's not as far as they think it is, that fear of failure would like calm the fuck down. Oh man. That stuff it can so my whole thing. Because so many people are so scared of failing based on seeing the pinnacle of where motherfuckers have reached. But if you actually like went through where they were going and mirror that to your life. What would happen if you understood that y'all were in the same fucking spot? What now? Now back to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. One of my favorite quotes, by the way, before I get back to my wife, is if anybody that looks like you ever made it, you have no excuse. For real. Let alone they have the same interest in you. Facts. And Fuck. similar background. Facts. Factual. Real shit. For real. Real shit. Anyway. And bro, look, like, oh, here we we're, go. <laughs> we're, we're, no, we're all guilty of that. Like, I'm very guilty of that. Yeah. You feel me? Same. Like, it's been a blessing to find this avenue and also get the fuck out of my own way. Yeah. Would people have ever thought that about me? No. Right? 
was I as vocal about that? Like in my times of complete destitutedness and fucking like rock bottominess? No. Right? Did I find freedom in being able to expose that and being able to say like I've been there? Hell yeah. Like imagine a world where vulnerability was like the lead. And mm. all of us were able to just to be open. Mm. Right? Where would where would like the disconnect happen? Nowhere. It wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of this platform. Mm, true. You know what I'm saying? It's like autobiographical platform. It's like we're not speaking to De- Devin as Devin on deck. We're speaking to Devin. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beauty of it because we are all human beings. Right. That's the baseline of this shit. True. Okay. Back to my wife for real this time. Ba- ba- <laughs> <laughs> so, so at the time, I'm 15 or 16, one of those. It doesn't matter. I just got back to, no, I was 16. I just got back to California, mm. summertime. And two blocks away from my mom's house in Oakland lives the Stones. And they are like a pinnacle part of my life to this day. But I didn't know that it would be that then. Shout so out have, to the Stones. Yes. So you have Angela Stone and Corwin Stone. Angela came from the Johnson family. The Johnsons, she has a brother named Daryl Johnson. And he has a daughter named Shanae. The last name, mine now. But anyway, back then, hey. she used to come out. She used, she used to come out every summer to the town to kick it with her aunt and uncle. So she's two blocks away from my mom's crib, and my mom and her aunt talk like, "Hey, we should, you know, that she's getting to meet. She's getting to meet." So I'm over their house one day. I've already I've already known the Stones from church and stuff. They cool cool couple. Again, they're young. I think Corwin, yeah, back then uh, he was like a dope ass graphic designer. He'd worked at Apple before, like. I think Wells Fargo, he was freelancing, he had a dope ass man cave with like similar to this art, but it's all his shit. Oh, right? That's lit. So now it's now I got Pharrell in real life. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I latched on that boy like a dog on a bone. But anyway, so I I'm like, yo, like you two blocks from my crib. <laughs> yeah. I'm over here as much as I can be. You're so cool. And you're like a living version of what life could be like for me. This is crazy. That's incredible. So I'm just asking questions, learning shit. So I still got hella art books that he passes down to me in my crib right now. <laughs> That awesome. man, that man has no idea. Even to this day, well, he knows, but I don't think he knows mm. how much he's really affected my life. That's incredible. Oh man, such a blessing. Anyway, I'm over the house one day. Andy shows me a picture like, "Hey, you need my niece?" And I'm like, "Hell yeah, I want to meet your niece." <laughs> I just saw this beautiful chocolate girl. She had these braces. It was a family picture too. Yeah, she probably embarrassed by it. She had, <laughs> she, she had braces, <clears throat> long ass hair, chocolate, curvy, and I was like, "Yo." She looks gorgeous. I'm like, absolutely, I want to meet her. Our first date, and it was it was so like looking back, it's so funny. So my mom, my dad, my stepdad at the time, uh stepdad still, so that's still, but he's my dad. I don't even call him that. He's my, my father, sure. my pop. Yep. Mom, pop, grandmother, her aunt and uncle. We all go to the movies together. Oh, family movie yeah. night. We're, we're we're at the at the uh Grand Lake Theater by Lake Merritt. Mm. <laughs> I'll see Lord of the Rings. Everyone falls asleep except for me and her, of course. Because the long ass. It's <laughs> Lord of the Rings yeah, one. Out in real. That movie's like, ain't that like four movie, movie. four hours? Yeah. Yeah, it was ridiculous long. <laughs> Everybody crashes out. It was, a late, it was a late movie. Yeah. But me and her, we in the middle, so we holding hands. We ain't winging. Nobody go to sleep over here, okay? <laughs> um, and then after that, we started kicking it. So that was like my, we never got together, but that was like my summer girlfriend. Like every for time sure. the summer came around, I would like try to shut it down and kick it with her. Mm. Yeah. And then she came out. For college to SF State, so oh, I went to wow. I went to Academy of Art in San Francisco. She went to SF State. Clink clink. I had to try to lock that down. So I was like, "Look, we're gonna do this." She was like, "Yeah, we got <laughs> together. We got we were together for two years. Yeah, two years. I proposed to her at twenty, bro. Ooh, wow. I knew I loved that girl since I was eighteen. Oh, I, I didn't man. say it until I was. I didn't probably didn't say it till later." Proposed her at twenty, she said yeah, then no. He wow! Because so so the story is this: she wasn't she wasn't ready because I was her first everything. Since I'm I'm the firstborn boy in my house, I got a lot out of my system. Got you. In so many words. Got so you. I'm like, look, ain't none of these girls compare to you. You my shining jewel. Mm. I took you to prom like like if her parents flew me out to prom, take her to prom in Southern California. Like I'm sold. You the one. Let's go. 
Yeah. You know? And again, like, I'm going back to the, the community that I've engulfed myself in at church where, like, these young, dope couples driving dope cars, having have fun. Examples. Yeah. have great examples of marriage that is dope. I'm going to your house parties and shit like that. Yeah. And it's fun. And, like, you're living dope lives. It's not like TV. For sure. Where, like, you know, marriage is super stressful. It's like, no, like, it can be dope. And yeah. I had a lot of dope examples. So I'm like, yo, that's what I want. Yeah. Let's like, I'm not saying get married tomorrow. We can get married in two years, three yeah. years. I don't care. I'm trying to let you know I'm serious. Yeah. And she was like, I hear you. But you're my first everything. I'm curious. I want to explore. And I'm like, you're dumb as fuck. However, do what you need to do. I'm not going to wait on you, though. But if it does so happen that we come back together, sure. I'd rather do that than you step out on me and I can't trust you. For sure. Right, right, right. right. So I rolled the dice on that bitch. Not on her as a bitch, but on that bitch as on the situation. On the situation, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I rolled the dice on that situation. And it came back around two years later. We're 23. Um. She comes back and this, I was on my, I had my, uh, sidekick at the time. I've been on T-Mobile forever. I had my T-Mobile sidekick at the time. And I, <laughs> and I, I, remember, I remember, yeah, 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 yeah. You got me. You got me. I, how about, how about my, uh, how about a car? I had my car at the time too. I had a, had a Mazda 646. Right? Is that Mazda? <coughs> yeah, that's a Mazda. Right? I think so. It sounds like a plane, bro. Yeah. Whatever. Was it a Mazda? I think it was a Mazda. My first car. How about, how about my little whip? I, I pull, I went back to Berkeley to buy some sneakers. So, um, on, uh, on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley is where you find a lot of the shops. It's like, it's like Venice, but no beach. Mm. So very hippie. You got like, Lit. yeah, you got all the vendors and shit in the street. We have actual like reputable sneaker stores. You got Bows and Arrows. You got 510. I don't know if you heard mm. of those before. Those are reputable like sneaker stores. So cool. I, I was pulling over to 510 to get some shoes, hop out. I see an aim from Shanae randomly and it was a long ass apology. Like, I know you're the one for me. Like, I apologize for fucking this up. Like, I wow. should never even. Oh, she came to you like that. Yes. And, she, and, wow. and this is the most, at this point, she's the most prideful person I've ever met. Oh, Remember, wow. she's an LA girl. Perspective. Yeah. Silver Spoon. I'm the princess. I'm the firstborn. I get mm. what I want. I don't apologize to no fucking body except my daddy. So, she, with her coming to me like that, I was like, I just like, I stopped what I was doing. I was like, what the fuck is this? And uh, she's like, you know, I just apologize. I'm not saying take me back, but let's start over. Let's figure it out. Like, she really just humbled herself. And I was like, wow. When you want to do this? That was it. For real. And the fucked up part, the crazy part, two weeks before that, I just asked a girl to be my girlfriend that I was just messing around with. Mm. She was really cool. I loved her. Really close with her family. Like, still got love for her whole family. It's all good. Yeah. But she was like, no, like, I'm having fun right now. Yeah. She's a dancer, so she's, like, in the girls, too. And she's like, yo, like, I'm having fun talking to this girl right now, blah, blah, blah. And I ain't tripping. Like, I'm a female. I'm like, whatever. For sure. If I was not another dude, I'm not tripping. So she's like, I'm having fun just kind of, like, it's just being, like, you know, free. Sure, but sure. when the one comes back. Bro, she came back. I was like, okay, well, like, what's no. the timing of that, though? Yeah. What if yeah. she would have said, yeah? Then I'd be like, oh, well. I'm in a relationship. And that yeah. might have fucked everything yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. But it so happened to work out. A year later, we married. That's incredible. And that was it. <sighs> Little broke ass wedding, but it was a dope wedding. But it wasn't like you know, it wasn't like on TV. I get For it. Sure. But it was my wedding. It's That's a union, right. though. Yeah. yeah, it was beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Went by quick as fuck. And then, wow. and then next day was the actual life. But wow. yeah, that, that's been my rock, man. It's been my, my rock. I, I, I. Remember that hey. song about flies? That's the most ridiculous song in the world. Rock. I, 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 I. I wish you could see Nucci's shoulders right now. <laughs> man. How does that man stay culturally relevant still? Because he just like him. Yeah. That's like you. You're going to be relevant forever, bro. I hope so. I hope so. To me, at least. I hope y'all are. You are the you man. If y'all don't understand how much Anoush is the man, I love you. Like you bring all, the you bring energy and light to a room like my grandfather did. Love, real shit. Mm. And I hope I continue to smoke like my, he does as well. Yes, you should. My <laughs> mom needs to meet you. I would love that. Dead ass. I would love that. She should be coming to town. Maybe I think she's gonna come to town with my mom, sisters, dad. Everybody coming to town. Maybe in the next couple weeks. Honestly, let me know. I will. I'm there. Yeah, barbecue let's, or something. Let's K- get it. Korean I'm, barbecue. I'm all like about that. that. Mm. Yeah, you know, Fat Noosh is ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't fat man. Come on, you just thick, baby. Chubby <laughs> Noosh, we good, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. shout out to that gorgeous scenario right there, and in regards to the wifey, yes, and that beautiful journey on how y'all 
brought it back. Yeah. But but like bro, like that's real life. Bro. You feel me? I would have like the la- like this last thing I was thinking about and it just fell back into my lap. Let me ask you this. Yeah. In wanting to get married, right? To her. To I, her. I wouldn't have been married if it wasn't for In her. wanting to get married to her. Yeah. And knowing that like you wanted to build something special with your queen. But you were still Eddie Murphy in his apartment without the royal blessing and without the royal highness behind you. Facts. Right? What 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 what's that what was that like for you from a man standpoint of we're gonna be together. I am gonna be the provider. We are going to build a life w- together with, with one another, but we're gonna have to hit some rocky roads ahead. I'm glad you're with me for who I am. Right. But like, look, that's all good. But even the the men in us is like, fuck, this is about to be difficult. Right. Like the dude that knows he has his girl with him and she's with him with his brokenness. But he's also like, I need to get out of brokenness. ASAP. Right. Yeah. I know this is going to last, but like I need I, I need to fulfill these shoes that I have for myself that I haven't been able to rock yet. Yes. Like those custom Devons, right? <laughs> that you right. haven't created yet. But right. like, what was that like for you just as a young man that has embarked on this road? And, and this is before, this is before any certainty. Right. 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 Like you're starting a union and you're planning to build a life with somebody together. It's all cool to like have found that love and to have sealed that union, but also, you, you both know there's a road ahead that is completely undefined, right? What what was going through your head at that moment, and what what was that vision like for you as to how you were about to tackle your future? All I knew, bro, is that nobody was getting out of this relationship alive. I knew that for a fact. So, like, mm. no matter how hard it got, we weren't going to throw around words like the D word. We still had never thrown that word around. Yeah. Uh, nobody's getting out. So regardless, we ended to win it. A, B. I got a job right away. I started working retail right away. Got it. Um, I didn't have a job at the time though, but I got a job right after. Cause no more hodgepodge. When I'm by myself, hodgepodge shit is cool. I'm like, I told you I was. I told you I was. Des- I was graphic designing, doing a little work over here, a little work over there. You know, whatever I could do. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babysit, make whatever. it work. Yeah, all the, all the most legal shit possible. Yeah. And then I get married. I'm like, no, I need some steady, some steady income coming in. Yeah. But it, I didn't. I don't think it really. I was naive, bro. I didn't really see the weight of it. it took Which me can be a, a t- blessing. It took me a couple years to really let it sink in mm. because I freaked out. Maybe my like six months or a year into it, like damn near hopped out the shit. Mm. Really hurt hurt Shanae a couple times. Relapsed a couple times. Like I'm not sure if I can do this on a, on a couple issues that were deal breakers for me because in my mind I'm like okay. We agreed on this being the plan, but now shit's changing up. Mm. And I had to remind myself that of the the vows that I made the first, you know, in the beginning. Yeah. Like outside of the vows from the wedding, I'm talking about the, the promises that we For talked sure. about before we even got married. Because we did counseling and all that where we just laid everything out on the table from like, like the conversations you need to have, the ones that are like really important to Absolutely. have. Like, 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 like kids and like discipline. And it all comes back down to how you were raised, yeah. basically. Yeah, For yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to, you want to make sure you kind of, you know, talk about those things before they come up so they're not such bumps in the road. Because if it's a little thing now, if you hate her laugh now, you're going to really hate her laugh if you're mad at her. Right. For sure. And it's been 20 years of that same damn laugh. It's going to drive you crazy. For sure. So so you might want to just not marry her now if you hate her laugh. If you just can't stand it, don't do it. (laughs) But little shit like that, for (laughs) real, like drive you mad. So for me, I had to just remind myself, like, yo, bro, like, A, you're young. You're not stuck in your ways yet. So... We gotta be flexible for each other, and be both be able to change mm. to make it work. You know, absolutely. And that, it like, it's like love is a decision you make every day. Mm. You know, it's not like a a blanket you just throw over. Or I just can't help it; it's emotional. No, it's no. a fucking decision. Yeah, that Cinderella story fades quickly. Right, All right. It becomes real life. Yeah, God can't say, "Oh, uh, God so loved the world that He gave." Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Actions right after that shit, for sure. Mm-hmm. Right after that shit, mm-hmm. so you have to be doing something. It's a decision to do something mm. with that love. So, if I love you, I, I can change. I can stay flexible, mm-hmm. you know, and vice versa. So, 
it was a fucking deal breaker for me. I'm going to need you to bend on that one. And if it's something's a deal breaker for you, I'm going to bend if it's not that big of a deal for me. And we had nothing that was that that serious in hindsight that needed to like for blow sure. up the whole relationship. It wasn't, sure. it wasn't worth it. Um, but after years one and two, one was trash, two was a little better, three on, great. Mm. If you can make it through those first two, I think you're solid. For sure. Yeah. Unless you're dealing with like some real issues of like any past abuse or anything that's serious, but we didn't have any of those, that, that back kind of baggage. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. Incredible. Yeah. Cause it could have been. Yeah. And you're, it's just, I mean, being that age, that young, <laughs> you're still a kid, you know? True. Um, and you're going through much. Like I got married in October. I'm now 35. Congratulations, hey, bro. Thank you, man. What it do? My boy, Shout my out boy. to Kalia. Yeah, yeah. Big man decisions. <laughs> and we were together seven years before we got married. I know we're seven years though. Think about it. Oh yeah. That's right. It was that, about 15. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Married 23. There you go. Cause remember, so this, this is a torturous part about being broken up with somebody that you're really close with. Mm. Still close to a family. Right, we're broken up with two. I still see you at church twice a week, right? Oh wow! We still babysit some of the same kids, so it's like flaunting in my face. And I know she out there wilding, bro. I know she wilding, yeah, because her auntie in my ear. You know what I'm saying? I'm still kind of keeping tabs, and she being cool. She kept her priorities together. Her grades were still up. You know what I mean? She was still handling her business, but just making wild decisions. And after after a while, just certain shit I just didn't want to know. I'm not I don't even talk to me. Yeah, yeah. But I knew she was out there wilding, so that would bother me a lot. Um. But things, so, but things do get real, like, and, you know, kind of diving into, you know, as a married man, it just, it changes. Like, people ask, you know, how's married life? Oh, it's the same, right? And it's like, no, no, no. Nope. I don't care how long you've known each other. And or if, if you look, live together, it don't matter. In a practical sense, in like a day-to-day, like, yeah, we wake up, make the coffee, do the, like, that's the same, but emotionally responsibility wise commitment wise it's a different there's link. a lot of things that are very very different that switch overnight yep um and it's all for the positive it's, it's this is Absolutely. not a negative it's just it's a change that needs to be acknowledged part of that is kind of what you were getting into of like i got to get real finances now what was your mindset on kind of your career path in because when you start to visualize your future whether it's kids or your life together you know I said this before on the podcast. My friend's father said a quote that just I love. When you're single and you have no no one around, no kids, no spouse, he said, you only have one mouth to feed and you don't even need to feed it that well. <laughs> it's so real. Facts. When you're married, it kind of changes. It absolutely like, changes. Like you're as independent as you may feel. And as much as your spouse has your back in whatever you want to do, you still are in this with someone else. And th- you're just, the whole vision changes. Where did your mind shift to as you started to develop and grow with yourself and with this now partner? I knew that whatever I wa- whatever was in front of me, I was going to make the best of whatever I had. Mm. So in retail, I moved up as fast as I could, as much as I could. It was a, you know, efficient. So I went from like working at J. Crew at the time. And I was just regular, like, you know, started off as like a sales associate. Then mm-hmm. I moved up to, I think I did like personal shopping where I like would like basically like basically style people and have client lists and all that type of stuff and do a lot of cold calling and things like that. Didn't really like that as much. Um, what else did I do? And then I went to Keyholder, which is like assistant manager. And that was like, was that my third year or second year J. Crew? One of those years, well, two or three years. Mm-hmm. And then... Vans opened across the street and they were there for about a year. They needed an assistant manager as well. And I was pretty much done with the crew. I wanted to kind of feed my streetwear side again. Mm. And I jumped over to Vans and that was a year. But all this time, so 2013 is when I started kind of dibble dabbling on Instagram a little bit. It was like 2013 when I first got an Instagram. But Shanae was like, yo, we should start them. I was like, okay. Like, and I treated it just like a Facebook. That's all I was used to. So at the time, it was just like pictures of food and like whatever. It was private. If I didn't know you, I didn't want you to get in. I was very much scared to put myself out there. And like, I was worried about privacy. I don't know why. I shouldn't have been, but I was. I feel you. So that was a weird situation for me. I wasn't used to it. But I started noticing like these guys kind of like posting their outfits. Like, oh, this is cool. Like a little community of like fashion dudes. All right. Post a little outfit. And this is why I'm still working at J. Crew, you know, before, before the vans move. I'm, I'm going to cut in. No, Because I, I just want to know, like, yeah. you're now in this route of uh, kind of conventionalism, right? Right. Um, but you started, like, your college in design and 
what, what was kind of driving you was very creative. Right. The things that like motivated you from your sneakers and designing and also the Photoshop and the creative design that you were doing. Now you're moving into a more conventional route because you know, you need the steady income, you need some security, you need to build that. Right. Was that other side um, bubbling in you at all during yeah, that time? Yeah, I would, I would moonlight still doing stuff. So I was still designing album covers and all that type of stuff. So that on. still was going on parallel in what you're doing? Absolutely. Cool. I've always had some type of night job or some type of like side hustle, whether it's making me money or not. I would just like do a tutorial. That's good. Just to practice and get a skill down. Yeah. Just so I can continue to sharpen my skill. That's all. I mean, I would just do, do side projects, just try shit. Yeah. That's it. So... Yeah. So like my way I did that through Instagram, I started like posting these like flying pictures. That was like my thing. Like I would like Photoshop myself like flying at an astronomical height or something in clothes. Cause I was like, Oh, nobody's flying. Let me see if I can do that. Cause again, I've always been obsessed with differentiating myself ever since, you know, like I told you, middle sure. school, yeah. red hair. I was doing the same thing in a different space, mm. but now I had more tools to where I can like do cooler shit. Yeah. So I started doing that. Um, and that was fun, but again, the most important word that I didn't see would be important is I was moonlighting as a content creator for like up and coming fashion brands. So like I would beg them for like a sock, shirt, shoes, whatever. I didn't have never, not a lot of shoe brands back then, but like whatever I could, piece of garment or whatever. And I would shoot it. I would kill it, do a dope shoot. They would like it. We continue to work together. And I would try to like hop on the phone or hop on an email so we can really talk and they can see how I think. And they're like, Oh, Okay, like mm. it's more than just the visual. He understands kind of the process. He understands kind of how to story tell a little bit. So I started getting more responsibility. I started helping them like write things now, like descriptions for products or the about section or, you know, certain captions. And like mm. basically I was helping them build their brand voices. Wow. I, but I didn't know. Because it was organically happening. Yeah, I didn't. It was before digital marketing was a buzzword before we had mm. all this shit. I had no idea who a lot of people were i didn't like i wasn't engulfed in none of this stuff i was just organically like work cause all i knew how to do bro was clientele and save my work sure. from graphic design yeah but i'm like this is a new type of work i don't know what i'm doing this for like this is not quite producing i'm not quite directing i'm not quite doing I mean, marketing but I'm, it's kind of a new thing so i'm just like saving whatever i'm doing for these brands mm. and i had no idea what i was saving it for until uh opportunity that came along and changed my life and before we get into that, yes. I want to point out something so interesting that I love to to talk about is in the world of uh, of creative, we're sometimes bound to think of like, no, we can't do anything. We have to stay right in line and, and go full force at it and no plan Bs, nothing. And I, hearing what you kind of went through, it's you always stay creative, but you had this conventional side of you working retail uh, making sure you're getting paid, getting money, working up the ranks, and doing this thing on the side that's organically growing. And it's just such a, a cool um, perspective to have for anyone that's creative of like, look, that kind of stigma or perception of that you can't do anything but be a creative and don't step into the conventional world because that's going to set you up for failure, I think is bullshit. For I think sure. you have to kind of like organically figure out what works for you and do what's best for you at that time. I agree 100%. And again, since I had conviction, I knew how to really hustle. Mm. And that means handle what you need to fucking handle. Yeah. I know you don't want a job. I know it's, you know, you hear of artists all the time. I was a homeless. I was on the street. Then I just blew up. Okay, great. I need to eat. I'm married. I got that, responsibilities. That, that, that was a, that's a good for you. You know what I mean? You know what yeah, like, like, high five, bro. Like, that's great. That was your reality, bro. I'm not trying to starve out here, man. Yeah. I still need to have a fresh pair of sneakers on my feet. And you can still be, and the thing is, you can still be very <laughs> successful right. doing that and working at this thing that you're building and letting it organically grow. That's right. That idea of like, wake up. If you're not happy, quit your job and do what drives you. It's like, I feel you, but I got to eat. I have someone I'm taking care of, and I'm not trying to like live under a bridge right now. But that's, right. Where, that, that's where I truly also feel like that conviction that, that, that's spoken of really comes into play. Totally. Right? Because if somebody has that conviction, they know they're going to make it either way. Mm -hmm. So it's up to them at that point to decide how they want to live that life in pursuit of this dream. True. Right? And, and whatever responsibilities there are or aren't on the table. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like... What I think a lot of people like misinterpret is like the guesswork and also the, 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 the praying to all gods that they do make it like while also doubting that it's a possibility along the way of those that became homeless and then finally out of a, like a sheer shot made it. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that could be the case. For Somebody sure. could believe in their craft so much that they're like, you know what? I'm not going to sacrifice anything, but I'm going to work every single fucking hour of this day to make sure that I'm better. Mm-hmm. Then there's that same person that says, I'm going to do the same, but I need to have a job. Exactly. Like, I don't have any money coming in. I'm not going to sleep in this in this whip, but from 9 to 5 or from fucking 10 to 4, whatever the fuck it is, they're going to work. And then from however many hours it is left, they're going to put to their passion. Exactly. If you have conviction, it's going to work. To the youth, like, don't get caught up in this, like, guesswork that happens in this, in this fantasy tale that's told of, like, I was homeless for eight years and then finally it happened. Like, what? Nah. No. Nah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if there's one thing that you should have is conviction in your craft. Absolutely. If there's one thing that a lot of motherfuckers don't have that, like, are caught in this whirlwind doldrum scenario, it's the lack of conviction. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you have belief in your craft, you're going to find any type of way to make it happen. Now, if that means you got to deliver pizzas at fucking uh, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. and then go do your shit, and you're still not making good money, but you're going to do it, you're going to go do it. Absolutely. I would say this, though, because I picked retail on purpose. Remember, I went from clothing store to Vans, sneaker store. Mm -hmm. I always stayed in the lane of what I fucked with Absolutely. At, at heart. I still love fashion. I still was, you know what I mean? I was still kind of in the realm. Yeah, for I, sure. Because remember, now that I'm higher in the ranks of management, I'm having talks with corporate. I have the phone numbers. I know what the addresses are. I'm learning about the other positions that might be open in corporate. I'm, I'm like always shooting higher. I'm like, maybe that's that's my path in. Maybe I work from retail and, sure. then, and you know, show some of my talent and move my way over to corporate. I interviewed like over at like Gap Corporate. I fucking I had connections over there i tried i tried to finagle for sure i was out here trying to figure it out probably add a tremendous value too to what you're doing right and that, that's my point with like just to to people that are listening is like don't think there's one way to there's do not this one way and then no. that's the point don't think the only way is quit your job right now and live your dreams it's like you do could not be, quit your job yeah you could be and if look, if that works for you, if that's what you all all good, but there's not that's not the only way. You can be as strategic as you want, you could be as methodical as you want, you could do whatever you want to do, work, work on your passion on the side. But like you said, Nushi, without that conviction, without yeah. that drive, that's the thing that's gonna that's gonna take you there. Um, and that's why I like that you 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 brought that up is having a conventional side, but also your creative side, and probably both are adding the same amount of value to each other. I think so. I think so. I think the more I began to hate retail, like I feel like, and who did I get that quote from? Probably my pastor, my pastor Rick. He's he's hella dope. Again, he goes by his first name, which is also dope. But anyway, one of the quotes, my favorite quotes from him is like, "You're like you're either gonna change from the pain of not changing, or what was the other one? I forget. But anyway, I use the pain of fucking the situation not changing to change my situation, basically." I butchered this quote completely, but the point is that you want to use that any discomfort or complaining you could be doing, Mm -hmm. use that same energy that you have. I was sick of retail. I was done. I was like five years in. I didn't want my boss's job. I didn't want her boss's job. Yeah. I was fucking done. Mm. So I was like, I got to get out of here somehow. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this to fuel other shit outside of here. I'm going to figure it out. So I was, and it's funny, man, like one day you're grasping at straws and trying to figure some shit out. The next day you're in LA. (laughs) <laughs> was that was that how it was, <laughs> bro? So <laughs> Let, let's go. So so at 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 one time, I'm again working at Vans, and I'm doing Instagram stuff. I might have had like my little my little nine k ten k followers. Um, I had like a, I had a, my own hat brand in Oakland too. A little uh, a, a headwear brand I started. A little streetwear, a little fast fashion thing. What I would do was, bro, my, I, okay, again, I learned how to hustle. I learned how to figure it out. Conviction. I, I would get knockoff Supreme hats for like $5, $7 from a little like Ali, Ali, Ali Express or some shit like that, right? Get them shipped to me, rip their labels off, put my own labels on. Cause they would make patterns and shit that Supreme never brought out. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just look original like I made them. Put my, and then my labels didn't cost that much. I get them from Etsy. And then got somebody like a local like tailor to like sell them all for me, mm-hmm. like a little tailor shop. And I started my own hat company in Oakland. It was called Extra Proper. If anybody, you. if anybody in the town listening to this right now, 
Y'all remember extra proper? I should have. I should have kept extra that. Extra proper. It was straight fire. who banging at his finest, Bruh, Exactly. I, I was shoestring trying to figure it out. <laughs> but again, I, I I wanted to get a taste of it. Like, I'm, I was always trying to figure out how to. Yeah. And and like that's before the entrepreneur word was so sexy. I'm just like trying shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Trying to figure it out. Uh, that was my that was my outlet. So anyway, that's that's all I had going at the time. Working retail, Instagram shit, working with brands if I could, and then my headwear brand. And then at the time, one of my best friends, Justin, we had like just kindled our relationship, just started like getting close. But right, right when he, like right after that, he got right, he got recruited to Snapchat from Twitter. He worked at Twitter. He was like full tech ride. He was like, he had conviction and a, a vision for his life earlier, way earlier than I did. So he did the whole, the quintessential college track to where he was like already like at Twitter, had equity, crazy bread by the time he was, 24 23 you know something like that crazy wow. i'm like whoa i don't even know what it looks like now even to this day <laughs> yeah. crazy bread so and he's an engineer so that's so for perspective of bread they yeah have, you know the tech companies engineers are at the top of the totem pole so that's what he was at great inspiration of mine also just a very like normal person just a dope dude from the d uh shout out to justin uh he it's funny i just talked to him right as i pulled up here by the that's way lit. uh just checking in with him see how he's doing he actually just got married shout out to jess, jess, hey, uh, jess Watch. Hey. my good people um other grown man moves happening so he got recruited to snap he was there for i think like nine months so he was you know he, he was gone or whatever and then he hit me like dev they're starting this uh stories platform they need storytellers You've been storytelling for brands. I think it'd be a good parlay if you could just, you know what I'm saying? You probably could just get over there and do it that way. And he was like, I'm going pl- I'm to I'm plug you and I'm going to refer you. So it already gives you a head at the top of the totem pole when it comes to for sure. getting your stuff looked at. Yeah. And then I'll also just give you game on like the application process just so you know what it looks like when you get interviewed, just the kind of questions they're going to ask you. And that's it. And I said, okay, cool. So he kind of game me up. Sent over. No, 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 no. That wasn't my first reaction. I'm not going to even... Stun on you. I'm not even going to hold you. I'm yeah. not even going to hold you, fam. So <laughs> actually, actually what happened when he first sent it to me, I was like, nah, I didn't even read it. Because in my mind, I was still closed minded. Again, everything's like a key unlocking, right? This is a key though. An- another, another, another key yes. unlocking. I was like, I'm a fashion dude. Why do I fit in a tech company? And it's, and it's fucked up, right? I spent, I can't whole, do this. I spent my, I spent my whole life since middle school trying to come out of boxes, trying to break boxes and say, no. I can be accepted. I can like this shit and you can still accept me. That by that time, it was so in me still. It was still in me mm. that I said, no, I, can't, I don't fit The there. trampoline was put in front of you. You were like, I can't hop on this stuff. I can't. That's a tech trampoline. I need my yeah. fashion trampoline because mm. it wasn't my vision of how I thought I was going to get sure. there. Sure. Sinead was like, boy, if you don't look at that damn application. I feel you. Read the job description. You even read the job I Actually, no, I have not read the job description. Okay, read it. I read it. I was like, actually, this is actually dope. She was like, see? Word. And, if she had not said Shout that, out to Shout out. She, I would not have. This is what I'm yeah. saying, bro. Yeah. I feel you. She is the key. I feel you. Without my wife, I would not be here right I now. I feel you. Anyway, <laughs> I read it. I applied after a month of like <coughs> calls. They flew me out here. Because we all go do that interview. shit. Bro. So many of us have these opportunities presented to ourselves that like we don't look at. And later on, we're like, damn, what if? But it's not linear. It doesn't look like gold, bro, because you're looking at a mine. They give yeah. you the mine. They don't give you the gold. And it doesn't mean that by going like a little like offshoot side route, it's going to like stop you from your fucking initial dreams. That's something that held me back for the longest time. Yeah, man. You feel me? A gold mine's all dirt, bro, until you dig through that mud. Facts. I, want, I wanted jewels. I didn't, I didn't ask for this damn dirt. Oh, it's a mine? Oh. Oops. Okay. Yeah. I, but I stopped six inches before I hit the gold. Exactly. But I didn't realize it was gold until my wife was like, if you don't just dig a little deeper. Incredible. You're right. I need to do that. So after a month of going through the whole application process, it was a lot. A lot of hoops to jump through. I got in, man. They gave me a signing bonus, like 10 racks to move here, which is government take half of, but still. Yeah. That's enough to put down on rent. Yeah. Moved in downtown because that was the closest to inner city I could feel like. What I didn't want to do is have the same culture shock I did when I went to Georgia. That mm. might, might have been what I wanted to escape. That's probably why I put my foot down with downtown. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. I just realized that right now, That's too. Wild. Crazy. This podcast is amazing. I love so, it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get I get downtown because I wanted to make sure I felt like I was in the city still. That's incredible. Because my experience in LA is like especially West Side, super relaxed. People yeah. driving slow, they talk slow. Yeah. 
Nah, y'all just big chilling out it's here. All yeah. good. I'm trying to get down here, have a, another level of hustle. I was like, my life is about to fucking change. Yep. I could not sleep the first night I got here. This this is what the hustle looked like for us. I'm serious outside right now. This, this, so this is like for us. So for me, I had an opportunity to move into my boy spot that already lived here in downtown. Mm-hmm. So I got his like the low rent he had because I took right. over his lease. He's from the Bay too. He moved back to the Bay. I moved into his spot. I had to come out here a week before my wife and like train real quick. So I was out here for a week by myself in a new spot before she even got out here. Mm. I promise you I could not sleep. I was downtown. Like I was like, my life just changed this fucking fast. Wow. And the funny part is that my wife's been like, she was like in my ear about let's move. Let's do something else. Let's do something different. I want some variety for a long time for maybe like the last year before we moved. And I'm like, nah, nah, I want to stay in Oakland. I want to raise our kids in Oakland. I want to stay here. The most beautiful city in the world. Where else yeah. you want to go? We got the water right here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The opportunity came up. I said, boom, let's boom. go. And it was like whiplash for her. She was like, whoa, like you came here and like you thrive, Devin. Like you are like, I feel like you're settled in. Like even to this day, she's like, I don't feel like I'm settled in LA yet. I'm like, I hear you. Like, but she's like, like you just came, like the city was waiting for you. Like it was just mm. like, this is like, like this is where you need to be. And I was like, yeah, I didn't see that till I got here. And I have you to thank for it. You know, like that was, it was like, I was just so damn juiced, bro. I literally could not see. I stayed up for like four hours just in bed. Like ready. Then that feeling you got when you was a kid, like before the first day of school and you got your for fresh sure. yes, whatever the sure. hell it is. I don't your care. outfit plan. Yeah, I don't yep. care if it's the outfit. I don't yep. care if it's your new Game Boy, your yep. fucking backpack. Yep. Yep. You juiced about yep. something. Yep. Yep. You're gonna see that girl again, whatever it is. Yep. Dude, whatever your shit is, you excited about some shit. Yep. I had that same feeling. I was like, I'm here. This is really happening. I'm gonna like start training at Snapchat tomorrow. Unreal. Insane. Unreal. In a fully furnished apartment, by the way. Condo. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thousand square feet. Florida ceiling windows downtown. You're lit. Crazy. 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 From a little. Doesn't happen. F- yeah. From a little apartment. Yeah. In, in San Leandro, just outside of Oakland, because we couldn't afford to live in Oakland. Crazy. Blessings. Blessings, bro. Blessings. I couldn't afford to live downtown then. I just had a boy that had lower rent because he was living there. I feel you. That was just on some, like, on some, just a. Yeah. God's plan. Yeah. And God's, God's plan. plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to, like, your wife encouraging you and just that unlocking happening. Clink, clink. And it's just like, it, it shows so much about how closed minded we can be. For right. sure. When you're so, how scared we could be. When you're so focused on like what you think your narrative is supposed to look like Man. and what your career path is supposed to look like. Right. And you could be so focused on that and miss what it's actually supposed to look like and right. do. It's crazy. I, one, it's funny, man. When I was in a band, um, you I play t- instrument, bass. Okay, yeah, but he's a thug. No, but for real. you know, for man, from like 15 years old to nearly 30, like my entire every decision I ever made was based on like being a musician, band life, whatever I had to do, play, 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 play. Every decision, every relationship decision, school decision, anything, and bands broke up that's just what happens in the music industry look at Rashi's hair that's me sitting in the van Yo. that's me sitting in the van that in, in, that, in, in, that's in that, that van, van. That's that's that yeah. was literally a seven year memory today wow wild your hair's wavy bro <laughs> wavy if you grow it out right now it's still wave like that yeah oh sure. wow and <clears throat> I told this to Noosh like uh, a few a few weeks ago but I said it's like you know I wonder if the only reason for my band was, and just, uh, you could think about this for anything, but was to meet Anoush to do this podcast fucking six, seven years later and create this platform. Maybe things fell the way they would so I can meet my wife, you know? And I could sit here and, and be regretful or think about like, man, I should have been a musician. I should have done this. And I was, and, and my career path should have been that life. But it would have closed me off to everything happening in my life now. Right. And I think it's just such an interesting point. Like that's why I say shout out to uh, your wife for just clicking your mind to just look at that application. Cause what an opportunity you would have missed for sure. You know, you wouldn't even be sitting here right now. Facts, you know, talking and, and, and experiencing everything you have. Right. So like, it's just, it's just such an opportunity to just say like, 
stay open. Like even if yeah. you think like your creative design, fashion, tech, like what? Just say yes. Just do it. Say yes. Do it. See it. You know, be open to it. Oh yeah. Another key unlock, bro. For sure. Just I feel like any speaking to what you were saying, yeah. any of the things, if I would have made a different decision, if that girl would have said, Yeah, like it's all a game. Yeah. It's all a game. And to think how in control of like the uncontrollable we are. Like we're not. We're you hell know what I'm not. saying? Like So why not throw caution to the wind? For sure. Why not? Why not? But it's it's crazy because like as a as much as we're looking for those moments and as much as we think that we have like a hold on them, we really don't. Right. It really comes down to that conviction. Right. It really comes down to that moment of like, okay, fuck it. Like, let me try this. Right. Right. Some of us are, uh, held prisoner to that mm-hmm. of like thinking that we have our destiny all mapped out and others ha- have bounced from one fuck up to the next to the other opportunity to the next fuck up to the next opportunity through that and then find their way. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, what was that uh, experience at Snapchat for you like? Like, and how did you grow from that? I grew a lot, man. Snapchat company culture is trash. You can ask anybody who's ever worked there, who's working there now. It's one of the reasons why they're losing at the moment mm. from the top down. <sighs> they're losing big right now. Karma's coming back to just like whoop on that ass. It feels good. Because mm. um, they don't treat people like people. They don't develop talent, in my experience. They don't. It's, it's very much a, a, a toxic political relationship based, fear driven. Frat bro culture. I actually wasn't expecting this culture. I wasn't expecting it either. It's like I wasn't expecting that from my pops when I moved in, but I knew how to adjust because mm. I had that experience already. Wow, another one. Woo! Bam! Oh. A third one. A third one that I just realized right now. So I, so I, I learned how to adjust on a different level, right? Because not only am I like one of four black people there, um, I'm also talented in a different way than everybody's talented, mm. right? Even though I'm on a content team. So the content team is super dope because you have people from different worlds of storytelling. You got like writers. You got film people. You got... People that wrote for like video games and shit like that, like interesting, cool people that knew hella shit, but then they put us in this little box and said, no, just do this one thing, right? And then like prove blind loyalty to me and then maybe you can do the next thing. Mm. It was a, it was a weird thing. And like we were being led by someone who was extra fake woke, very privileged, boho chic, alpha female. Mm. Which makes a closed minded person, but very naive to who they really are. For sure. Right? So, like, screaming at people, come, you know, making decisions based off of whatever, whatever. I don't know. It was, it was, it was tough. It was tough, especially on my team because of the direct leadership we had. And by culture, the time, culture, like, culture is, key, yeah, man. culture is everything. So, after my first year there, maybe, maybe first six months, Seven months, maybe around that time, I just shut my heart off, man. I was just like, okay, don't care about work anymore. Because outside of work with the Snapchat name, when I send an email, I get an email right back. It was Devin at Snapchat.com. It was. It's not there. Don't try it. It's not going to ever work for you because <laughs> it's gone. It was gone the day, I, the moment I left the building. Before I even left the building, it was gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah, it was it was crazy finesse time outside of work. So I just... Made the best of what I had, just like I did when I was working retail, bro. Just like, just like I did when I was, you know, like whatever situation you put me in front of, the common thread of my life, the number one key to my success for me. I'm not sure what it looks like for anybody else, but for Devin, make the best of what's in front of you. So mm. I have a environment where work culture is not based off merit. Like I've broken records. I did great things. I've, 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 I've covered for people. I put blood, sweat, and tears. I've missed family stuff. I've, you know, all that. Cause my hours are still crazy. Cause for the content team, we were handling things that were global time, global time. Exactly. So we would come to work all types of hours, but life already prepared me for that. Cause I worked retail as a manager, mm-hmm. all kinds of hours. Mm-hmm. So I was already ready for that. I was, my, and my wife was ready for it too, which is beautiful. She was already used to that. Mm-hmm. I'm just getting paid different now for it. Word. So she was like, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't a shock for our home, which is like a blessing. Who would ever thought that? For sure. If I would have said, like, I walked into the perfect job. Mm. So now I have, so now, like, I've stepped into an environment where, like, I'm in a new space. I'm learning new things. I have a different 
network now that I'm kind of tapping into with this like tech culture. <coughs> and then our team changed and responsibilities changed to like local LA stories. And we tried kind of took like kind of a coverage and news kind of angle. And then since I was a fashion authority at the company, then I covered a lot of the fashion stuff. Like literally New York Fashion Week was like a global story. Mm. But because of insecurities of other people and leadership, a lot of people were younger than me too. I came in that company at 29. So, or 28, 29, 28. Yeah, something like that. Almost 30. But a lot of people were like 20, 22, 21. Mm. And because they like foresight and experience, I would do good and then basically get taken on projects for doing too good. Mm. So I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck all that. I'm just going to finesse outside of work. I'm still going to do my job, but I'm going to make sure I gather relationships as much as I can, really build those, just make the best of what's in front of me, you know, and try to build with people and try to try to be who I am and like really sharpen my skills of of uh, being uh, networking better. That's it. And like, and that was a whole game within itself, like learning how to network in a way that felt right to me. Because one thing I wasn't good at in the Bay and one of the reasons why... I probably wasn't really good at making like a whole bunch of friends in high school or any of that. I wasn't, and I wouldn't even call it being fake. I didn't understand. How do I put this? I didn't understand how to nurture relationships or like mm. make them long term. Mm. Right? Like, cause I, cause I didn't want, cause for me, it's like, I don't want to try to get somebody to like me. Sure. But sometimes you just, you don't necessarily, like put yourself out there enough Devin I'm talking to myself right now right, right, to right. even see if you guys have a connection right away you know mm. what I mean so like I was, I was always kind of guarded or not fully being myself in front of somebody or not fully being transparent or vulnerable enough to even be open to building an actual connection so it never I never was good at networking before I got to LA and practiced it because that's the opening conversation in, in the culture of LA is what do you do uh, so yeah. even, though, even though everybody hates that question, I know it's not, you know, who we are as people. I think who are you is a way better question to ask. Sure. But it, it is what it is. It gave me a lot of practice and I learned how to play the game in a way that felt better for me. Um, and, and in hindsight, I, I, I wish I would have known that sooner. But I, again, you know, you, you learn on your own time. Did you ever think about going back? To the Bay? Mm-hmm. Nope. Don't miss it at all. And it's so, crazy I'm saying that now, right? Cause well, like, it's just interesting. Like you come, you come down here, you, you're so excited you can't sleep and then you're put into a situation that, um, is, is opposite of what you could have expected. Um, in terms of culture, how you feel about it, your heart. What, I'm just trying to think of like your mind at that time. What really kept you here and in it? I could understand if you were at a place for a long time. But you didn't really have much of an investment. It's kind of easy to be like, look, this isn't for me. And you could easily go somewhere else. No harm, no foul. What kind of kept you in it? The city was for me, bro. Like I, It was in the air. I couldn't I couldn't shake the fact <coughs> it was where I was supposed to be. You found home? Conviction, bro. Conviction. So it was LA. LA. No matter what. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in it to win it, bro. No matter what. Mm. And my friends were finding, like again, my boys I went to college with were already finding success in weird ways, right? So like... Sylvester, Reggie, started off graphic design. Yeah. And then, like, in his last years of college, he started painting and doing, like, other That's shit. He started following his heart and kind of fell into, like, where the fuck... Like, he's doing crazy shit now. Crazy shit. Crazy shit now, right? Like, met people that I, I can't even... You yeah. know, like... You know what I mean? He got people naming his phone that I could never yeah. even get an email back from if I tried. I you know what I mean? That type of shit. He can go to the house for dinner if he wanted to. That type of shit. Um, so, like, that inspired me. Um, I started really... Learning how to like build gas around myself. Remember I told you my mom gassed me up a lot. Yeah. So for me, I just know people have like affirmations every morning when they wake up and shit like that. Like I've learned how to be that for myself. Like my mom stopped me in the moment and said, be yourself. Yep. I gas myself up throughout the day. I've been doing that for a long time. But I feed, what I feed off of though is watching like and listening to stuff like this, like podcasts so I can really get to know people. Mm-hmm. And then also watching interviews and looking at documentaries or like advice or some shit when I really get like behind the scenes of how somebody got there. I've never really been inspired by what people have. That's why like I've never really been into well, again, my fifty cent fabulous phase, I had hella costume jewelry with the fake diamonds and stuff. But then I got back to myself, like I said. I've never really been into like flexing or like being impressed by that 
at a short period, maybe two years. But I was again, I was engulfed sure, in that for shit. sure. Yeah, I was I was brainwashed. We all have that. Yeah, um, but by and large, for the most time of my life, it doesn't impress me. I want to know how you got there mm-hmm. and how how it can apply to me in a way. Again, mm-hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm a sponge. I like to soak up game. Yeah, I like you know what I mean. So where I can learn, that's where I learn. So I just saw too many people close to me and afar from me that have figured it out. So I just knew that. I need to make the best of what was in front of me. And I had the Snapchat name. And it was respected everywhere. They were the hottest thing smoking. It wasn't now when they've been robbed of basically everything they are and are also making dumb decisions inside and out. So, But they've been tone deaf from the beginning. They were just hot. So everybody forgave them. For sure. They've been bringing out terrible filters that were just like culturally insensitive. How do you think it was working there? I feel the only you. tech company not to stand up for Black Lives Matter was Snapchat. Unreal. And I worked there. Wow. How do you think I feel? Wow. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, bro. Crazy. Like when you're winning a lot of like the the bullshit and the And you fuckery, wouldn't think like, California young yeah. leader would Nope. Doesn't matter. Wow. Doesn't fuck it. If you close minded, you close minded. Wow. Period. Jesus. Is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. You know? So I'm like, look, man, he's a kid. He's has he has his reality. He has whatever the fuck he wants to. He's untouchable. I can't worry about things I can't control. For sure. I can worry about me though. I'm Devin at Snapchat.com. I can do something with this. And I was already working, doing fashion stuff. So like all the local stuff I started doing in LA because we were doing local LA coverage shit. I would do all the fashion shit I possibly could. I would email people out the blue, get coffees, whatever. Like when I'm, even though I'm not at work, get coffees, whatever I could do, like sit down with them and I start practicing Using networking. the clout. <laughs> I finally had the clout. I was yeah. searching for it out there. A fourth <laughs> one. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so yeah, man, that was, that was, uh, that was tight. And I got to really genuinely connect with people and. That's that's what happened between there and, and leaving. What made you decide to leave? Blessing in disguise, bro. It was a it was a situation where they closed my department. So either like Devin, you take this layoff, or you got two weeks to find a different position in a company that you might fit in. But it, we're not gonna help you get there, though. We're not gonna assist you. We're not gonna like we don't see anything in you that you possibly could. <laughs> Nope, none of that, none of that support. Because nobody high enough knew my value. Like people that immediately <coughs> I reported to, absolutely knew how much of a rock star I was. But everyone else, they didn't care as much. They didn't know. It was no way they could know because they weren't invested. <coughs> they, they can name. They couldn't name. They sat down my whole team and said, "We're closing this whole department." It was mm. like a, a bum rush type thing, right? My mm. bag was still. They didn't bring my bag to me. It was like, "Nope, you got to leave the premises right now." Jeez. That type of shit. It was like super, <laughs> super cutthroat. <coughs> but anyway. So like I'm texting my wife like look they're letting everybody go right now I just text her I said I'm, I'll probably be home in like an hour you know wow. I'm saying yeah I'm like do that they're like okay but like you know I was like okay so what are my options at this point like so if I want to change the teams or whatever like how how long do I have till I lose my email and everything you know and all that shit they're like well a couple of weeks so I was like, okay cool so I text immediately text one of the people that I knew because I'm, I'm I build relationships that's the mode I was in in L A I knew that was kind of a kind of an HR role. I'm like, look, let's grab coffee tomorrow. Yeah, if we can. He said, cool, cool. He knew he knew what was happening. He's like, all right, cool. Sat down with him next day, and I was like, well, you know what's going on. Here's my background. That's what I've been doing outside of work. Because again, I've been working with brands. I think I had maybe like 20k on Instagram at that time, but I didn't double my following or 25k. I'm still doing like hodgepodge stuff. I'm not doing a, nothing astronomical, but I'm 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 getting work done. I'm doing I'm working with brands I love. I'm building relationships with the Snapchat front, but then also with my personal brand. I'm also like doing brand deals and stuff. It was, it was like, it was fun. I was like kind of doing the fashion guy thing. Um, I still didn't have a blog. I'm not a blogger. I never considered myself an influencer, even though people try to put me in those boxes. Again, you know, I'm, I'm a box fighter out of, out sure. of her, whatever sure. word that is. I, don't, I just don't do it. I can't fit in those. I wanted to find what I, what I do myself. Mm. I've always felt more so as a designer or, a producer, art director. That's kind of what I, what I want to be respected for rather than having influence. I think influence is something you earn, not something you try to aspire to get. Like it's not a, it's sure. not a career path. It, like I want to be an influencer. Like, it's like it's a, lot of, a lot of kids say that. I've, I've heard that. I get DMs about that every day. And my answer to everybody, if you ever DM me and ask me that, email and ask me that, I say don't worry about being an influencer. Worry about earning that title like what is it going to take to get that title like an actual skill actual value add what are you doing for others to have influence for sure you can't be a thought leader without experience and an actual perspective and having angles. given thought hello okay 100 yeah. percent. exactly so that's always what i turn the conversation into because it's never been my goal but anyway i'm kind of 
filling it out and doing a little bit more in that space. And I was like, I want to leverage this over to maybe, you know, join a marketing team or whatever, whatever I can. So I started like talking to other teams. And again, I'm hitting the ground running while everybody else on my team is like head spinning around. Cause again, a lot of people are younger and like this is their first job and they're like freaking out. People were crying in the meeting. I'm just like, what are my options? You know, I'm trying to like figure it out. Like I was caught off guard. Cool. But I was like, maybe I'll stay. So basically, I was interviewing around and kind of talking to other people, and it was the same bullshit as far as who I was interviewing with. Because I would like interview with the person, talk to them, mm. see who they are. Then I would talk to all the employees that work for them, mm. and they all told me the same politics or the same shit. And I was like, "Nope, uh-uh. can't do it. Not doing it." So I just said, "I'm gonna take my severance," which was like three months of pay, which was amazing. Didn't have to do that shit. And like, <coughs> and then like, and, and then I, I cut. So like, that was like, I had three months, basically ninety days, to figure out some other shit. And I told Shanae, I was like, look, I can get another job. I was looking. I was like dibble dabbling looking. Sure. And I was like, I can get another job or I can really try to make this this shit happen full time. And she was like, go for it. So it really took me like six months. It was like three months of like, we was cool. And then we were scraping for three months. And then I kind of figured it out and got it got it together. But yeah, it's a perfect storm, bro. The perfect storm. And I, and I, I think if I really tried, I really went, if I really stuck with it and was stubborn about it and really felt passionate about staying and I could have stayed. For sure. But I look at it as my decision to not continue to pursue it. I just didn't want to continue to stay in that culture. Did you struggle with, um, when you decided not to, to take another job, <laughs> um, like apply for the job? I mean, I know you were dibbly dabbling, but like when you said, I'm going to try to do this on my own, did you have uh, like any hesitation or fear about that security? You know, and look at a paycheck. I just want to point this out too. You worked for Snapchat. There's a false sense of security when you work for a company. Sure, you get that check every two weeks, but also you can be out of the building in an hour if they say so. Um, Especially in California. Yeah, so security is always a, a, a funny word. And what that means, like you have to really kind of like peel that back and like, okay, what does it mean? Like I'm just not going to, I have to make my own money. Well, what does that mean? Like if you really start peeling those layers back and get to the root of like what really is secure, you start to realize like, okay, what am I really scared of? I started a business about five years ago, four and a half years ago. And one thing I always thought of was like, okay, let's see how far I can take this. Anytime like I got really freaked out, I was like, let me see how far I can take this. I don't make money. So I drive Uber. I don't get any Uber rides that day. I don't make money. I lose my apartment because I can't pay my bills. I can't, I sell all my shit. That money goes through, can't pay, let's keep going down the line. All the way, all the way, all the way. And where I ended up was on the couch at my mom's house two blocks away from where I live now. Like, that's not that scary. Like, you're still going to be okay, right? I was like, okay. So what am I really scared of? And then you, like, you really take it there. Like, take it all the way fucking there. You have to. For sure. You like, what to. am I, going to lose my reputation? No, I'm not going to lose my reputation. Yeah. You lose your credibility. Like, are people going to call you a loser? No, no one gives a shit about my life that much, for real. <laughs> for and real. the people that do are going to, like, Fact. encourage me, you know? So, bro, but you, you got to understand, though, we're also in a generation of, like, the social media highlights, bro. Like, everybody's got their highlights for popping. Sure. Everybody's like they're having the greatest life. And that really affects people. Like, that's for really sure. a thing. For and, like, sure. Part of my job, most of my job is social media, bro. Like a lot of my yeah. life is out there. I make money on both sides of it, whether it's the strategy side or the actual content side. And it's all, if you don't look at it in the right perspective, you don't have the right viewpoint. Yeah. You, it, can, it can really, just like the fabulous and, and fucking 50 cent days, really suck me into that gangster culture. Same thing. You can think that everything's supposed to be a certain way and get caught up in that image. And if it's not, you feel embarrassed even if nobody gives a fuck about you or yeah. cares. It's true. So what was that for you though? Like really kind of like stepping into that world on your own and saying, I'm not going to take a job. Let's do this. Scary as fuck. Yeah. So for the first two months of me not being, or maybe the first month, me out of Snapchat, even though I, that's my feeling now that I made that call to be like, nah, I'm good. I feel like a failure, bro. Mm. I felt like, how could I like, Cause for me, I'm a big person of like not making excuses and just taking responsibility for whatever. And I'm like trying to think of like things I could have done better. I was like, the department closure though isn't my fault. I know that they closed the whole department regardless. They didn't even, they, nobody got saved from that. Nobody, they didn't pull anybody aside. But if anybody should have got pulled aside, it should have been me, but nobody knew who I was. Right. I've always had, again, like I'm my own gas or upper. My mom's, my mom's trained me that way. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm like, 
I know I'm the shit. However, I still feel like a failure. And I was like down about it. And, and the biggest part for me wasn't about like the failing part. It was about no one's now going to fuck with me. Mm. Now that mm. Snapchat not, is not in the forefront. Because mm. who who are you? Are you like just Devin from Snapchat? Or exactly. are you Devin? Exactly. Like, ooh. Exactly. And that was the thing. And that's when it said, that's when that's when it clicked for me. Like, I have to reclaim my value. And thank God for my man, Gurkarn Baines. That's like one of my best friends, my brother. Shout out to him. He just got married too. <laughs> and then my man, Ikwak. <coughs> It's all good, bro. Bless you. Ikwak, love you, bro. <laughs> Vaping his life away. Um, <laughs> so I, I went to visit uh, Gurkhan in Boston. We flew from Boston to Houston, where Ikwak lives. Played GoldenEye and fucking drank vodka and ate barbecue and shit. And they had to basically talk me out of the mindset I was in. I, was like, I feel like down about it is like Devin. It's all perspective. Like you got to take you got to take back your value your worth you got to make sure that you understand that it's their fucking loss they didn't see mm. the greatness that's in you mm. like what are you talking about it's you, hard to do that like, internally like, like, that's yeah, self-worth. Yeah, yeah he was like you're the most hustling ass person i know like you got to make sure that you put that in front of your face and you look at it like you have to tell yourself a different story now so it doesn't become a story in your head later and it actually benefited you for your ability to be able to speak openly about that yes because imagine like that just being in your head you not going to your homies because you don't want to seem like you're that guy and you not getting that guidance that you ultimately needed to just like reality check your shit. Exactly. Because yes. so many of us like drown within our own inability to be vulnerable. Yeah. Oof. That's family though. Well, that's, that's family versus relatives. Like you can't pick your relatives but For your sure. family, it's up to you. For sure. You know? Mm-hmm. And then that's fam. That's fam. So Word. like, I mean, and I have different pockets of people that I know I can trust in that way but that that's just how everything got aligned at that moment and I, I needed I needed that support and he just stepped up and was like just just come to Boston I, I got your ticket just come on and it was just like that was it beautiful and it got me it got me kind of boosted me back to where I was supposed to be that along with my internal gas and I just had to make sense of it and like you had to be, you had to believe it though exactly so my so for the next, like what's conviction without belief exactly so for my next year my chant to myself was shift the paradigm so anybody else, every anybody I spoke with, I had to make sure that everybody knew that it was Devin now, not Devin from Snapchat. You fuck with me or you don't. Mm. That's it. Question: Did you, did, like, what was, yep. what was what was almost that ratio? Where was it yep. like that when that Snapchat at Snapchat dot com fell off your email? Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Wow. Fifty fifty. And you yep. realized real quick too. And I was fine with that. By that Incredible. time, I was already built up in my mind. I was, yeah. it, was too, it was too late. Another key. I was good. Whew. Yeah, man. So that was that was the adventure. And like, Snapchat was still such a blessing, bro. Like after I turned my For heart sure. off, I like I took the university approach. I learned everything I could. Had a great network in tech. Sure. I knew people from super high in fashion. Like I literally toured Jeff Stable's whole office. Got to know his whole team. Like this is one person. Like I'm yeah. talking about. I touched things and had access to shit. That nobody has access to, like yeah. backstage at the Fashion Week. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not, I'm not tripping. Like sure, my network was extensive at that point. So as far as like having ceilings, there were none. Right. I, I'd already touched everything I wanted to touch that I dreamed of, and the exposure was there. So I was already set. Like I did this because I earned it. It wasn't just like given to me for sure especially my black ass i know i earned this so mm. like it's not even a question yeah so from from <coughs> now from now on it's it's just Devin, <coughs> take it or leave it and what's this next chapter gonna look like and i had to i had to really look again at everything in the light that all the all the positive spins to everything like okay like i got nuggets from here i got a tech network i know everybody from growth hackers to engineers to whatever I know everybody over here in fashion. I have great companies I've worked with before. I already know how to freelance my ass off. So why don't we take Devin on deck seriously, continue to create content? Because at the time, I was making, I just started making video content. So I don't know if you remember around 2016 is when Instagram started doing video. Yeah. You know, Facebook had them. So Facebook's like, look, how can we take all this shit, right? They, yeah. they, they have the Apple mindset. They're like, okay, <laughs> Facebook's already killing on video. Let's put video on in Instagram. Kill Vine, just like that. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> for real, right? it was like overnight. Yeah, for real, it, really it was like 
They're murderers. So they, <laughs> they really so, are. Yeah, Let, so, let's, so, do the, let's do the Instagram story. There goes Snapchat. Exactly. You know exactly, what I'm exactly. Very fast. Oh, y'all don't, y'all don't want to get bought out by us? Oh, it's fine. Don't right. worry about it. Yeah. It's cool. So, so I noticed that they, they were pushing videos hella hard on the Explore page. And just like I became the flying fashion guy early on, I said, I can be the video fashion dude because nobody's doing video. But I didn't know how to do video at the time. So I had to teach myself. But in the meantime, since I know I need to do it right now, I had like a motion graphics guy. Shout out to Whoopi. Helped me out with some um, video content. One of my other boys from the fashion side. Cause, so while I was working at Snapchat, I met hella influencers too. Mm. So I'm at their feet. I'm learning all the game from them on like my personal brand stuff. So I can literally apply all this stuff to my mix. Like I can go back to doing my clientele thing, but now more less than doing uh, actual labor because what I learned from college is fucking full circle. Wow. So remember I told you I went to college. Five. Look, look, you're right. Remember I told you I went to college so that I would not have to do the labor of making yep. the shoes because it wasn't scalable. Yeah. Exactly. I knew that if I wouldn't go back to, oh, I can create content for people. No, because I know it takes me this many hours per video. I can't scale that and really make a serious amount of money that way. I might as well get a job over at Activision or whatever the fuck, right? No. I want to be respected from my mind because that is something I can, I can scale. I can give you the sauce that I have, but I can't do that unless I become my own guinea pig, unless I be, unless mm. I can prove my concept first. I have no degree, no pedigree. Like I, I was at Snapchat, cool, but at the same time, like, you know, sure. Like I, I need, to, I need to have a, a, a stronger, harder sell. Something mm-hmm. as a sure. like, like so, so. I used my network, what I learned from all the fashion dudes. I, I used the tools I had at my disposal. Again, I'm really good at making the best what's in front of me. I knew video needs to happen right now. Mm-hmm. As I learned video, because I learned that you can make video on Photoshop. I already knew Photoshop from high school, and I've been practicing still images. The animation thing. Exactly. So yeah. now so now the animation thing, I had to just learn that. Just start doing tutorials just like I did before. And fucking did the work and learned it and just started. And if you look at my, if you scroll back to my account on Instagram, you'll see my videos were hella simple at first and just got better and better. And now I'm doing fucking superpower Kamehameha ninja assassin shit that i never thought i'd be able to do for real you know now what for i've been real. two years now into video yeah you saw that shit bro yeah. that's crazy yeah. crazy yeah yeah crazy. bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro you're right <laughs> hello fun. Hello fun, bro. like yeah. uh, like all the shit i imagined doing as a child like you know like you role play you like doing fucking whatever i see your yeah. an- an- anime uh influence yeah yeah all of his anime bro People are like, hey, was that was that Mortal Kombat? It's like, nah, that was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. You don't even know nothing about that. That's like wow. super obscure shit. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, You're damn right, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely a weird one, and I'm even on season two, which is even weirder, or three, or something like that. Anyway, um, where was I at? So yeah, so I learned the lesson of making the best of whatever I had. I know yeah. I wanted to scale my services in some way, so I really put time into creating my own content only, learning video. And I had people help me out with video until my skill level matched my taste level. Mm. And then I can start like killing a video game. And by the time other fashion guys started doing video, I was already so far ahead of them. Now I'm the best. Like literally nobody can fuck with me as far as fashion goes. There's other guys that do really dope video, but they're not fashion guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all like follow each other. We're all like cool. For sure. But nobody does like that's my angles fashion. So like, cause that, that's what I love to do. That's like the, the most of the kind of businesses I work with. Like I have some clients that are like athletes and, musicians and stuff like that but mostly i do in the in the fashion zone because that's kind of where my heart is it always has been but it's funny just like dropping out of college because i had an obsession with how you buy stuff and mm-hmm. now i'm on the marketing side yeah basically selling stuff in different ways mm-hmm. it's just it's just crazy like how that led me and i'm still i'm closer to getting my own shoe now than if i would have tried to go that full college route Incredible. Oh, wow right like i can get my own shoe and have it manufactured by one of the best shoe companies in the world for sure you know so that that's tight still one of the dreams hopefully soon we'll see you know i, I want to just kind of take a moment to talk about like the entrepreneur side of and i want to actually just throw that word away because okay. um i don't even believe in it but when you're doing stuff for yourself there's so much that you deal with right i mean you're talking about learning new programs learning new things pushing yourself and at the same time you have to make money you still have to make ends meet you're working on like your own brand like juggling so much and in that it's like the there's a survival part of it where you're like i have to survive this because i'm responsible for making my own money for sure you know it's what was that that experience like for you in that those first 3 months the 6 months and when it really started taking not even taking off but just where you felt like okay i i'm 
kind of stable doing this, <laughs> but I still have to hustle my ass off. You know, it's not some like glorified dream of I'm an entrepreneur and I made it and I'm living my dreams. It's like, Bro. no, I'm worried all the time. I'm doing what I love, but I'm surviving. Facts. And I like to use the word thriving because I, I think for me, what I learned how to do with the like a combination of my mom. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. It's all good. And church and all the things that I've been able to wipe it all. I know, bro. It's a black shoe. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry, man. Thank respect. You, respect. 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 Love. Um, all the things that I learned from my mom, community, church, is to continue to like. I, I say stuff out loud to myself a lot. Like I'll be walking down the street and people will look at me because I'll be like literally talking to myself the entire time from like walking from houses to the store to get some. I don't know, chapstick or some shit. I don't care. I'm talking to myself because I need to gas myself up or like I might be practicing saying something like I'll like literally think of every op- every option of conversation, how it can go before I meet with a client or if I have a meeting or just meeting somebody for the first time, mm. whatever. Like I'm just I'm always doing that because it helps me get into a better space. And once and also because I'm an auditory learner. So that's like my learning style. I can, like writing stuff or reading it without sound doesn't help me. Audio books over reading all day. I'll fall asleep reading a book. Audio book, I can finish that shit in like a day. Wow. So that's just how I am. I can listen. That's why I can listen to the whole podcast for a long time. It's just my reading, not my learning style. Yeah. I didn't learn that shit till way later in life either. I should learn that shit sooner. It's like crazy. that should be like the first thing you learn. Crazy, right? Yeah. What the fuck? Anyway, <laughs> um, to, to, to answer your question, I feel like the feelings of success and stability, well, success. Yeah, success and stability, they come in waves. Mm. I define success about how much I'm able to take care of other people. Right? So level one success is make ends meet, pay bills. Sure. Level two is to be able to like save bread for the future and like be able to afford to like take trips and have a kid and like have a dog. But first it's like dog, then maybe trips, then kid, right? <coughs> level three, and probably before all that shit, is like support my wife and her dreams. She's very entrepreneurial she's very much a, a a dreamer as well but she didn't have the same gas i had growing up she didn't have the same pushing and encouragement in the same way so for her she's just now like okay i want to step back because i've taken the path of school that got me to a place where i do not like what i'm doing and i'm 30 and i feel like i'm behind because i'm on social media all day and all these young people are making great money and traveling the world and having great lives. I'm like, you don't know they can be in crazy debt. You don't know what's going on with them. For it doesn't sure. matter. Like, and it's never too late. You've mm-hmm. heard of actors that start their acting career at 35, 40 Oscars and have an amazing life. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. It's never too late to start anything. So mm. for me, I'm focusing right now on making sure I help her get in the right mindset and, and, and the right mind space around chasing the things she wants to do. She's a, a very talented jewelry designer. She's, an amazing cook, in my opinion. And I come from a house. I told you, my mom's been cooking since she was six. Yeah. yeah. My mom's the, girl, the woman that can go to the restaurant, try it, come home, and make that shit. Insane. Accurately. Like, it's fucking insane. I need cooking courses with mama. Exactly. But I think with any of us, and I think that's it's a human thing, like when we're really comfortable with something, we'll like pursue it with much For more sure. veracity sure. For or sure. effort than we would with something. So when she's not comfortable with something, she'll kind of, uh, like I did in college. I didn't know how to hustle against my own will because I have conviction. So she doesn't have conviction about it and she's not sure she can do it yeah. because she didn't, have, she didn't have people gassing her up all the time. Like my mom was really in my ear like that. It wasn't aggressive like that for her growing up. So it's me now and I'll gladly gas her up, but she has to see it. I can't make her see it, right? So I have to watch my gassing style because I have to make sure I do it in a way that she can receive it and be wise about that. But regardless of all that, she's a great example of, I think, all of us in the fact that you just do well at what you're comfortable with. Like she just, she'll like pursue any recipe, any cooking thing and nail it the first time nine times out of 10, 99 awesome. times out of a hundred. Right. She's like, yeah, I want to do that. But she also wants to surround the food piece with the event planning. She loves like planning events and spaces and parties and shit like that. So figuring out how to like give her the space to do that and not have to worry about working. So that means I have to have enough money to take care of the whole house and pay for extra shit. She has to get training. She doesn't, she doesn't have skills of like droid designing. Sure. You know what I mean? She has to have the freedom to throw an event and it to fail or not do well and we'd be okay. Like that's the kind of pressure I got now. And that, that could drive me crazy if I dwell on the challenge. For me, I dwell on like what 
opportunity opportunity is and like i look at it right like she she literally took the last six months off work recently from her last job because she was on a path she didn't like she was doing startup stuff like i was doing but like startup jewelry companies because again we always work around the things that we're going to get close to for sure yep. but she's really always been like on the on the office manager operations she's even done recruiting like everything on the corporate side and she really wants to go to the creative side so she knows she needs to learn new skills between here and here. Mm-hmm. So she was inside the box. Exactly. So again, six months of t- getting in the right mind space, diving into my stuff. So helping me create content and stuff like that. I'm teaching her stuff. She's learning. We're going to start a whole new YouTube channel where it's just like behind the scenes vlog shit. She's going to run the whole thing. Incredible. And she's like, okay, I need to learn new skill, but now money's tighter because I ain't been working for six months. So yeah, I know we're just paying bills right now. So that trip we wanted to take, we ain't taking it now because we got to do this real shit. Right. So. She's like, okay, well, I want to make more money so we can do that other shit I want to do. So I was like, then why not just go for a job off your path? Like, why not do something that you can learn the new skills you want to learn? You can be in a position to throw events or be in the food culture. Like, we looked at like, it. yeah, and you pay for it. But using the skills you've learned over these six months and things you've been doing off the clock. She has great, a dope personal great brand. Advice. I think she has like, like 15K on Instagram right now, which is amazing. She. Um, helps me run. She's half half the brand. My the brand I built. She has half the credit for that. I was like, you put me on your resume. We can make a whole media kit for you, and like, you know, you can do one resume for the shit you already done, and then let's make a, sure. a media kit or something for things you want to do because you show promise and potential. You know, so we'll figure it out. Like, maybe you start out doing contract work. Maybe you do, you know, find a full time spot. We've been looking. Like, it's so many dope like social media manager jobs Absolutely. that you can get that are entry level. Where you're going to be right next to the person or right at the seat of the throne where you can really just learn the skills you need to learn. And just for give sure. your time to do that. Give yourself time to do that. Because you never know what can happen for yourself in a year. You see how we got to L.A.? Yeah, you're right. Okay, then let's just boom go for it. You know? For sure. But again, I can't make her pull the trigger. You know, I'm, I've, I've learned all this time being married to her just to be <clears throat> patient. Like she's been patient with me. I'm not perfect. I don't, I don't move as fast on everything. Yeah. Like, like I'm great at hustling. I'm great at pursuing. I'm more of a run after it, jump off the cliff before thinking. She's like an overthinker, thinker, thinker, thinker. And that's a blessing sometimes for me because she sees shit I don't see. For sure. Right. But I'm like an okay son. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a all right. We have to believe it ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm great. Like you can't be great at everything. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm great at running from my goals. I'm great at doing what what I'm good at, but I'm maybe not as good as, you know, other people at other stuff. Like you're going to have somewhere you lack. And you, you've kind of been through it too in developing your own stuff and on your own. So it's kind of like, you could take that perspective and give it to her and right. give it to a lot of other people. Right. You know, um, and I think there's a lot of skills you learn um, that are intangible when doing something on your own. Yeah. You know, they, yeah, you learn to like talk to yourself and be like, it, it's it's not going on the beach, drinking a Corona on a laptop. <laughs> no, That's it's not. not. Like, entre- <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's getting no likes on your post and you still telling yourself, I'm good at this shit. Yeah. They're going to see, they're going to see this one day and I'm, I'm going to blow the fuck up. That's yeah. what you tell yourself when yeah. no one's in the room with you. You don't have a fucking camera out. You're not talking to it. You're not trying to sound like Gary Vee. Shout want out to, to be my yourself. dudes for inadvertently building you Bro, to be able to gas yourself up. All time. You need to be able to gas yourself Love up. Love that woman. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. in, in the darkest of times. You have to. Yeah. Because that, and that's, that's the things that matter. Like all, all, this shit only matters when you're in a really fucking dark place. Yeah. Like when Man. things are good, it, it's, but it's when you're, Going through that dark time and you're like, I'm terrible. I'm broke. Yeah. This shit's not These working. These are all my problems. I'm like, I regret not doing this. I need to start sending out resumes. It's one in the morning. I'm sending out resumes because I, I'm on LinkedIn looking at jobs. What the fuck am I doing? And then waking up the next morning and be like, I'm still here though. And we're going to keep doing this. That's when it matters. When yep. you're like in that dark place multiple, multiple, multiple times. Yes. And to answer your question, that shit goes in waves. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. One day might be, or one month might be an amazing month where, you know, I got racks on racks. One month may be a dry one. So I'm learning how to like just manage money better and save shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Just like don't, don't spend shit I ain't got. Like just, just like things you, you're supposed to just do as a responsible adult. Especially me now since... Yeah, since it's not a, it's not a steady steady joint. It's just it's just like you know it, it comes in waves. Where do you see your, yourself taking? Kind of you know you've developed your brand. You developed yourself. You're your own guinea pig. I like when you said that. Yes, sir. What's kind of the next step for you in in I guess unlocking to the next level? 
I think I'm on the cusp, bro. I think I always have a maybe a six months to a year plan. I don't plan out much further than that. Honestly, I can see what's in front of me and I can see what the next thing is going to be. Like I saw a video coming, like, you know what I mean? Like, and now I see the value in personal brand. I think people see what I'm doing, but they don't necessarily like see what I'm doing. If that makes sense. For like sure. guys, guys caught in the video too late. They didn't understand that. Oh shit. Devin has a sauce. I have more followers than him. If I just do that now, I will beat him at his game, but they're too slow. Mm. You gotta be faster than me and you're never going to be faster than me. And that's the point. Like I'm like for me, like I take a lot of pride about having my finger on the pulse because I think bigger than just like this, like what's in front of me, bro. Like I know that whatever you want to call it, influencer space, personality, whatever you want to call it, it's going to evolve into something else. And you're going to find it's not going to be as sexy anymore. It's going to be a, a separation of the, the, the real from the fake, you know? Mm. So like you have to be providing value in some way. And for me, I play the game from both sides. I want to make sure that my brand partners I'm providing as much value for as possible. So if, because for me, I have a seat at the table with these guys because I understand more than just give me something and I post it. I ask questions like, what are your business goals? Mm-hmm. How can I help you reach those? Mm. I can prove to you and measure how the creative can support those goals and get you there. Mm-hmm. I can, we can create our own KPIs together and track the shit. Me, I can do that. And then I can make the creative too on top of that. So now I'm replacing three people on your team by myself. How much money do you save now? Facts. Or how much money are you going to give me? Hello? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or, or likewise to like, if, if I'm doing my behind the scenes <coughs> stuff, like with clients and all that, same deal. I've done it for myself. I've done it for these people, that people, that people. Like, and, you know, how much more would it be if I, if I did it for you and gave you a personalized version? Because I give up tons of like free stuff out on YouTube all the time. Like the best ways to do whatever. Like most of it's like around Instagram and social media. Other half of the stuff is fashion. But I'm giving away like how I got here, bro. I'm literally telling you like I got a video called How to Work with Big Brands That You Love. Something nobody would ever dare to do. It's a sleeper. It won't blow up till later, till I blow up for real. Like my YouTube's like small. It's like 5K right now. And I think that's great though. I think I'm a big believer in um, in it's it's not you can't even look at it like giving away free information because it's like I mean yes obviously it is you're giving away like. But it's not, I'm not saying giving away. That's the part that I right. don't really believe in. It's like, it's just like you're sharing your knowledge and what you, you've learned, but that doesn't take away any value. Like there's a, I'm sure people are like, I'm going to keep this for myself because that's Bro. my secret sauce. I'm not telling anyone you like yes. going to protective mode. It's like, are you kidding me? Yes. If you think that's my secret sauce, you missed the point, bro. Yeah. Yes. Like my brain's the secret I sauce, boy. I, I am this. the sauce. The sauce is yeah. in my veins. Yeah. Yeah. So I know like, a lot of motherfuckers that are out there just like, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. You actually, told, uh, didn't you say like your teacher, um, USC, <coughs> like said, if you if you have an idea. Um, speak about it. Speak about it. It's entrepreneurship shit. Like, yeah. you, you have one of these like vast, grand ideas, like tell somebody about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so many people are scared of people taking their ideas, but like, if it was that tight, like, you'd be able to do it. If, if, if they're really going to steal it, then like, what was your idea? You know what I'm saying? Well, if you told them and they stole it, that means you move too slow. Yeah, for real. I, I'll give away all my At the end of the day, my, 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 biggest secrets, thing, my biggest thing, and I feel like it falls along the same ethos, is like, yeah. and especially like being through the world of like music, entertainment, like all of these, you know, scenarios where like the the gatekeepers like keep their foot on cats like the younger generations next it's like why like why like go through such an indentured servitude if we really want (laughs) if we really want the culture and the movement to shift like give your secrets but what are you scared of you're all if you really like if you're really about your if you're really about your shit you're going to empower the younger generation that's going to be tied to you there may be a few that aren't cool. That happens. That's life, right? But if you're really about your shit, you know you're gonna do it better, be quicker at doing it, and have those relationships already locked down. Facts. So what the fuck is the the problem of Facts. like giving the seeds Bars. for real? Facts. That's serious. Yes, you, you you read my mail just now. Yes, you know what I'm saying it's a confidence play, bro. I've told people I work <laughs> with like, look, like anything you want to know, let me know. Right? I'm not scared of you. Right? At all. I'm not. I'm not looking at you like you're competition. I'm better than you are. Right. You feel me? Like right. what? Whatever you want to know, I'll give it to you. Why? 
because I know I'll work harder, I'll be in there longer, and I'll do it better, and I have better relationships. Right. Right? I hope you get there. Right. I'll do everything I can for you to get there. Right. But we're two different individuals. Right. Like, there's no need for me to suppress anything. Right. Or, like, no. give you 80% of the juice. Nah. You want the it. juice? First of all, if you're formidable of the juice, I'm going <clears> to <throat> give it to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not scared of it. Right. That's what, that's what we should all do. <laughs> that's real. That's real. Like, anybody yes. that's trying to, like, that's trying to build something special, like, give the, give the youth, empower the people that you're working with. Right. If we if 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 we really believe it takes a fucking team and like to to build the shit and do it at risk of competitors taking it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Yeah. like believing yourself enough that you got the sauce, bro. For real, conviction. Yes, exactly. Perfect example of this, right? So today I put out a video. You saw the video I put out today. If y'all haven't, today is what the twenty second. Yeah, March twenty second. Go back to that post. It's it's fire for for uh, Foot Locker. Anyway, like I got maybe twenty of the comments in there were like. I can't wait for the tutorial, Devin. I can't wait to bring the tutorial out on how to do this. A, I do put tutorials out on my channel all the time on like how I do my edits, but I've taught the components on how I made this mm. video already. The people that aren't asking are trying it right now because they've actually have the hustle to do it. But that's yeah. like maybe two people yeah. out of all the people that DM me, ask me to do my edits because they haven't put in the work. Nobody mm. feels like putting in the work. No, they just want, give me the answer. Exactly. Yeah, my, yeah. my videos that do the best are the ones that are the apps. Mm. Three apps you can put in your phone that'll help your pictures be better. The, the best video apps to use. Like, I get it. It's useful. Everybody ain't got time for that. But don't, and I, even for somebody in my comments, even having a conversation with someone else, like, yeah, like, if I could do this, if I could do superhero stuff, I would do it all the time. But this is also a person that follows me in to see my tutorials. Mm. But, what are you talking about? I've given you all the components. Literally, yeah. like, and then one one person, one person, and I forget his name right now, had the best comment. I said, this is the, you win. This is the best comment. He said, I see all the components of your videos here. I got to go back and study. Oh, bang. I see them. I see them. Ooh. I see you taught that. Oh, and that piece, and that piece is like, yeah. oh, it's simple. You taught me all these You things. have to yeah. have the conviction to go get it. Exactly. If I study them, I can make this exact video. For yeah. sure. You're not going to make it tomorrow. No. But maybe in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months, you'll be able to do it. Exactly. If I've been doing Photoshop since I was 16, yeah. I'm 31 now, do yeah. math. Do the math. Because I can't. For real. <laughs> Six. <laughs> or is it nine? <laughs> I want to take this moment. Like This has been absolutely glorious. I want to take one moment before we end and ask you, first of all, let's take a moment and just like embrace... Mm. And relish in how far you've come. Man. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful, man. Grateful. Likewise. And secondly, if there was one thing that you could tell to somebody in the position of little Devin, who was at times alone, who at times didn't fit in, who at times felt so lonely and had gone through so much within themselves that they had to black things out or things blacked out in, in, in their in their minds of those periods. If there was like something that you could whisper in your ear, knowing what you know now, what would that be? I would, I would give it, I would say a few things. I would say one would be like something to the effect of it'll be greater later. Like everything you're going through now will be worth it later. You don't see it now, but trust me, just stay on whatever path you're going through, go whatever bumps you can go through in the road. Just always continue to stay you. Um, and the second thing I would tell myself, maybe this is not little Devin, this is like second time feeling alone, Devin. What? Um, she'll come back around. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, man. But but the, the biggest key, man, is just do the best of whatever is in front of you. That is the only thing I know that when I look back in my whole life, it's just fucking taking advantage of whatever I have at my disposal, Period. Period. Facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, there's times where I missed it. I wasn't perfect at that. Yeah, but the times I did do it, it benefited me. Nobody's gonna want to help you more than you. Facts. Know that. Mm. Big facts, man. We love y'all. Call your mother. Tell you you love her. Please Holla. do. Hey, hey, real quick. Where can people find you? Oh man, they can find me at Devin on Deck. Devin with an A, D E V A N O N D E C K. Everywhere, YouTube and Instagram. YouTube, you're going to find tutorials. You're going to find hacks on how to get your social media together better. Real shit, not bullshit. 
and on Instagram, you'll find a lot of inspiration, a lot of fire ass videos where I just like will blow your mind and some fashion shit too. I like fashion. I love sneakers. So a lot of that. There awesome. we go. Man, thank you so thank much. Thank you so bro. much for real. Incredible of story. Of course, man. Super yeah. appreciate you, man. Love. Bang. We out. Bam. <laughs>